can hear you. Um, thing. Words, 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 words. Oh, they can hear us now. Woohoo! Yay! Woohoo! Yep. Oh, awesome. Yep. <laughs> oh, Kay says that, yeah. <laughs> Devin. <laughs> All right, excellent. Uh, sorry for the hiccup, ladies and gents. Uh, we're going to just uh, introduce everybody uh, one at a time here. Uh, players, tell your, our audience who you are, where they can find you online, and who you will be playing this evening, uh, beginning with uh, Key. Hello, I am Kisama. You can find me on Twitter at True Kisama, and tonight I am Barnabas. Devin. Greetings, all. I am Devin. You can find me online at Sorta of Sullied, and tonight I am Miss Making Spots, also known as White Lady. Excellent. Ambrose. Hey everybody, it's me, Ambrose. My pronouns are he or they, and tonight I shall be playing Agent Wild, aka Daniel Jackson, who is definitely an alternate universe uh, SG-1 employee uh, who has a tiny void. That's not a very tiny void. Um, you can find me on the internet as Am Changeling, and you can find me on Etsy at Neat and Co-Designs. Excellent. Uh, Panda? Hi there, I'm Panda. You can find me at Vepols, V-E-P-O-L-S. And that's most places on the internet, particularly Instagram and Twitter. I will be playing Anonymy Gilman, who apparently got shot and ate two brains last game. I'm very curious to find out what she learned. And <laughs> you can find me here. And in future, I'll be playing in the same time slot for Dune, where I'm told that I may be permitted to play a nanny, Benny Jesert. Yes. Very excited for that. And last but not least, Ben. Yes. Yeah. Oh no, doom. <laughs> uh words. How about now? I think they got it. Words. You have a mic now? I uh, think so. I think ben. I forgot to hit the transition button. Yep, you there got it. Go. Ben Big Dad Walker, Yay. Dark Vision Cowards, Agent Jeff program. Uh, male suitor of anemone. <laughs> That's great. Okay. So I'll uh, I'll go ahead and just give a brief recap of what happened uh, the previous session so everybody's caught up to date on what's going on and we'll proceed as, as usual. After speaking with Gertrude in Langley, Virginia, Jeff flew out to Manhattan where he met with Gina, Garfunkel, and Gary at an empty lease office building. Participating in their recent scrutiny of Carlos Rivera's home, he pointed out several artifacts around the boy's windowsill. Artifacts that, when blown up image-wise, he was able to discern as the yellow sign. Impressed with his occult acumen, Gina dispatched Jeff and Garfunkel to take a closer look. After realizing that they were in the real world, the cell confronted John Cross, with Wilde tackling him but refusing to kill him. Cross smiled and stabbed the anthropologist, sending him out into the ceiling uh, and out of the mindscape. Barnabas refused to injure anyone but himself and shot and disrupted his own projection. Barnyard Bus, on the other hand, was stunned when they realized that they were in the real world physically and was shortly flattened by swerving vehicles on the street. The menagerie concluded that they should band together against John Cross in order to maintain control of their body. John Cross seemed confident that they wouldn't succeed if it came down between them and his singular personality for control. Cross was amused by their defiance and assured them that this wasn't the first time they had engaged in this back and forth attempt. Recuperating from his stupor, Barnabas finished his interrupted briefing 
Warlock informed that Wild had been compromised since before they formed W Cell and began these investigations into John Cross. He had been marked with the sign of the bloody tongue by the man in white, Stephen Aziz. Since the incident in Iran years ago, he's been listening and watching what they've been doing since first looking into this supernatural serial killer uh, of interest to Delta Green. Warlock went on to speak about his communing with John Cross and how his special plan involved kidnapping vulnerable and special children and sharing his greater truths with them. Some have returned and he's chosen one among them to usher in the end of the world, one Carlos Rivera. Barnabas adds that though his frequenting leaps into the future, he's met Rene, Carlos's brother, who asked him to kill his brother no matter what and avert the future that is coming. In these visitations, he has seen a large church, which is at the heart, at the, uh, uh, which is at the heart of all these things that are going to end. Together, the cell moved to investigate the young boy's recent reappearance. They arrived during a time when no one at the Rivera residence appeared to be home. Instead, they found two suspicious men leaving the premises after fiddling with the boy's windowsill, apparently cleaning it or of uh, black marker illustrations. Before either group could react to the other, however, two pairs of black clad motorcyclists rode up and targeted the cowboys and the program agents alike with automatic fire. After a brief and brutal firefight, all but two of the cyclists were killed and one was taken captive. Jeff and W Cell briefly exchanged numbers before going their separate ways uh, right before the police arrived. Agent White Lady drove outside the canvassing area and used someone's garage to interrogate the injured gunman, revealing that they belonged to a group known as The Network, a criminal organization headed by the likes of Stephen Aziz. Once they got what they needed, White Lady murdered the Network thug and fed Garfunkel's brains and his to Anemone. Agent Jeff caught heat for what happened from uh, Gina and Gary, but insisted on staying on the case, reaching out to Gertrude to report what had happened. He then made contact with the team, agreeing to meet up at a library in the evening to order an exchange, in order to exchange notes and hammer out a plan against the opposition. Barnabas reached out to a contact named Wes in the Bronx who could secure the team military grade weapons and armor. On the ride back, however, he experienced one last jump forward in time. There, the menagerie encountered an, an, an individual appearing to wear a pallid and reflective mask along with tattered robes. It was in this in a desolate city uh, that they discovered that they experienced a strange sort of deja vu. The masked figure proclaimed that they had arrived early at the end of time. He also revealed the cyclical nature of infinite time and the futility in attempting to change or curtail the horrors that awaited humanity. The special plan was the only way out. Many of the menagerie argued fervently against John Cross's special plan, preferring instead to let things play out as they would and face those hardships head on. This amused uh, JC, who promised that before the end of the world arrived, they would beg him to execute the special plan. By then, of course, it would be too late. And now for the conclusion to our current scenario and song. All right. So, where we last left off, uh, the majority of you had recovered from the firefight that ensued between yourselves, uh, two of these program agents that were on scene at Rivera's house and these uh, gun souls that pulled up uh, seemingly trying to murder all of you on the street um, judging by the tattoo that one of them had uh, agents Jeff and Warlock were able to identify them as belonging to a criminal network known as the network according to Jeff uh, this was an impossibility the network was long burned out back in the 90s early 2000s and they haven't been heard of since then but it seems they're very much alive or at least making some sort of a recurrence as for Aziz, the head of this or this supposedly dead organization, he's very much alive and well. Jeff realizing only too late that he had shaken hands with the man back at the airport right before he flew into Manhattan. Did more than that. <laughs> yeah, he shared lunch with him. <laughs> um, 
According to uh, Warlock, uh, Agent Wild was compromised in a similar fashion. When you shake hands with the devil, mm, things don't always shake out well for you. And uh, such has been the case when he discovered recently that um, Mr. Alziz has been listening in and watching what this cell does in, with particular interest for quite a long time now. But it seems that uh, John Cross and Alziz either have opposed or similar viewpoints as to this the execution of this end of the world. Uh, this unraveling of reality that is to take place if this supposed song of discord is played by this boy. Um, you uh, agree to meet up at some sort of a large library at night. It is currently later in the evening, the same day as that shooting. And uh, Anemone has managed to recover sufficiently enough that she's no longer ble ble uh, excuse me, bleeding. And with the brains that she managed to consume, uh, she gathered quite a bit of information uh, uh, from the one program agent, Garfunkel, who is an occult expert, and from the network thug, who is just some sort of hired uh, hand. Um, everything that you've learned so far, Anemone, has been uh, that the network, the way that Alziz utilizes these people is that they essentially have no idea what it is that they're doing until they're doing it. And him and his cohorts were instructed to shoot at anybody at that intersection at that exact moment in time. So it seems that Alziz has some sort of foreknowledge, much like how uh, Warlock has been able to sort of see things happening in the future. He seems to have a, a very good or complete picture of what is to happen because he apparently knew that you were supposed to show up at that exact moment. And that's when he mobilized these people to act, or in this case, to just shoot every single one of you until there was nobody left. What you do with that, with that, of course, is up to you, but you also have a, a much bigger uh, conversation that needs having amongst uh, the, the large majority of you before you decide to employ plans to avert this supposed disaster. Because I'm, <laughs> uh, unbeknownst to some of you, not all of you are on the same page. Uh, Barnabas, of course, makes the observation before he hands over control to the entity uh, that in or that in order to uh, avert this disaster, the heart of it seems to be this boy, uh, but also there's a secondary component to it, and that is the object that was unearthed in Iran years ago that Wild was a part of. Apparently, this thing, uh, over the course of several years, has been uh, removed, melted down, and reshaped into something else entirely, some other sort of instrument that is to bring about this end of the world. And apparently it resides at that church. So you have a couple of different things that are happening and that need to happen in order for this disaster to be averted. One is to somehow deal with this child who apparently has the power to do some, something like that, given the right instrument. And of course, the other one is to find said instrument and destroy it. Who knows? So, uh, I'll set the scene for you. You're all arriving at the, a very large li library at night. Uh, there's very few people there. Uh, there's maybe a group of people in the back playing like a board game or something like that very quietly. Otherwise, it's pretty much devoid of, of anybody there. Uh, you all arrive one or two at a time, and uh, as does Agent Jeff. And uh, take it away. You see each other upon uh, arriving and uh, there's probably like a small room in the back that you can occupy that you can sort of hash things out uh, without getting people to tell you to leave because you're, you're too loud. <laughs> Sorry if I'm a little out of it. The painkillers that I'm using for being shot are not exactly donated to me by a pharmacy. <laughs> we talking like so... dog or horse or... There was no pharmacy involved. Well, maybe there was a pharmacy at some point. It did have a name involved. Helena Gonzalez was on the bottle, but it did have a dosage. Uh, anyway. It, she'll, I think she'll be okay. We picked her up some of that uh, fish penicillin from the, the pet store. I think she'll be okay. Oh. Oh, if it's ivermectin, I'm gonna need to need a bunch of garum. 
because that really mechs with your flora. Oh, oh no, 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 <laughs> no ivermectin. Uh, only an idiot would drink that stuff. Hey, it's um, apple flavored. <laughs> Why would How fish do you... eat things to be apple flavored? Listen, when you're fighting a thok, we're not take very what you can sweet get. sensitive. Sweet sensitive is a land mammal thing. I'm probably gonna lose my sweet taste buds when I have said. Anyway, <laughs> Warlock gently pets uh, an enemy on the head and just kind of stares off into the distance. You'll be fine. The ascension will be fine as well. Oh yes, I'm just very curious what it would do to the effect of the consciousness of the entity that we are being controlled by or Mr. Cross if he went through that. Much how I'm interested in what consciousnesses that are currently trapped in my mind would be because you know they're not really dead. They're trapped eternally as ghosts in my memory. This is true. You see, Warlock is like, you actually bring up a good point. <laughs> and he's like, something I've been meaning to speak with the rest of the group about. And he's like, but he he still will deign his time to anybody else who has any ideas on, on how to proceed and whether and, or whether to proceed, uh, depending on the individual. Given the agreed ethics and morals of our group, I understand that it's perfectly appropriate to shoot a child. I believe this was established during the operation to assist the individuals possessed by other entities previously related to Walter. So um, is there any barrier to um, merely committing that kind of murder? I do believe that a descendant into a true horror that destroys our minds is a perfectly reasonable thing and supported by my religion. So for spiritual <laughs> reasons, I am perfectly content with an eternity of horror and the loss of the self. That's very much what my uncle said we were supposed to do <laughs> under the sea. And you go there, you become one with the Oh boy. Warlock uh, speaks up. Having rolled a critical success to peer into the future, he's like, well, a lot of things could happen depending on what we do. Killing Carlos isn't going to stop it. There's another, there's something else happening here. All right, so we shoot uh, two kids. We may have to do that. He looks at you seriously. <laughs> like, uh, John Cross is is fully uh, aware of, according to what he says, this isn't the first time he's attempted to get this to happen. Um, he's not very good at it. He's got an eternity. Well, according well, to what he's saying, there's other beings that are getting in the way are the things that are other factors that are getting in the way of his uh, enacting of the special plan as he calls it well um, thing is if all time is infinite and recursive it means that if it was possible it's already happened so whatever happens correct we'll listen officially i just shut down the conversation it won't fix itself we can't we're not allowed <laughs> to talk about that some You're people in the group stop tuning out the moment she essentially said Time is a flat circle. <laughs> yes, at this point, a very painkiller doped anemone is pawing at Jeff's face, going, You're very pretty. <laughs> oh boy. <laughs> May I offer you some pills I bought in a bus station? Uh, let's not overdose our fishy friend, please. Or what now? Uh, it's, it's a long running joke okay um because she and works at starbucks mm -hmm. i thought it was because she's part fish yeah. wait, wait. that's one way of putting it you know <laughs> bacteriacean american that whole thing i'm an american <laughs> citizen <laughs> god bless america Barnabas speaks up for him and is like, we should probably get to brass tacks here in a moment and he kind of relinquishes yeah. control back to the entity. Alright. Name's Jeff. G-Cell. Uh, where is my guy, by the way? Where is your guy? guy? Which one? You He's know, dead. You know the one you took with you? Where'd you dump him? So I can tell the cops... He has been neutralized. <laughs> He, has been he said very casually. Oh, you, which which guy are we? Him? Which guy are we talking about here? The one I said, "Hey, that's my guy." He was uh, with oh. me on the porch. Oh, um, he's 
We easy bake oven done, mm -hmm. along with the other people. That's fast. Mm. Nice. Wait, you don't want to kill us for that? Why? Because it, well, like you said, it's your guy. Listen, you got rid of the evidence. You used him oh, as a no. human shield. Wild. I don't yeah. think. He volunteered but, to be used as a human shield. Yeah, but I figured it was kind of like, you know, the sibling things where only I'm allowed to pick on my siblings, only I'm allowed to kill my coworkers. I... No, no, no. That's our get up here. Oh. So our no, guy with the tattoos like, on his face. Whatever you want to think, Wild. Where we've got Walter's kid, and we've got Winnebago's kid, and then we're going to adopt Carlos, and then we'll just be like John Cross, but better. Are those the two people that we have to deal with? We have three children that we're keeping track of right now. They're all very special. All right, so we got to shoot three children. I got it. <laughs> yep. There's gotta be another way. Listen, give me their addresses. I'll have strike teams there within an hour. I don't know. <laughs> I mean, we're we're talking about kids here. We're talking about the United States of America here. This goes far yeah, beyond America be and anything you ever imagined. I am not paid to give a shit about those other countries. Our facility. Fuck M Epic. All right, first of all, Mountie bastards. Okay. So, to establish, <laughs> Warlock said, no killing children, which is not the thing I expected to hear from Warlock, but I'm willing to take it on faith. He he only said that because he, he imagined that a good majority of the team would be averse to it, so he just, like, shrugs, and he's like, there's other ways. All right, so what are the ways, and how many of them do involve ritual mass suicide? So we can rule that out, too. But it never ends well, I promise. <laughs> so it's like an event in the deep dark, and when you have to clear your name, you go down there, and then the acidification of the water means well, that you end up joining the tube worm. That's not a good idea. I guess we could start with potentially killing him, and he points over to Barnabas. So... Wait, why are we killing Barnabas? Barnabas? Why are we killing Barnabas? Maybe has to die. Because John Cross lives inside of him as well. That's I what mean, he is. That would be the easy oh, 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 oh. And, and now it's starting to sink in a little bit more. Was what this is about John previously. Cross being inside of him? Everyone's inside of me. I think Even you. <laughs> Wait a minute. If everyone's inside of you, then you're possibly the unknowable entity that's dreaming us all, so we probably shouldn't kill you because that might eliminate us from reality. Exactly. Paradox, you see, uh, Warlock says. And you see, uh, now you're starting to get why it's ha uh, John Cross has had to do this so many times, because like Anemone put it, pointed out, time is this sort of cyclical thing that happens and is infinitely recurring. And so when John Cross came to the realization that that's what time actually is, it broke him completely. And that's why he is what, what he is. He came, he started out with this initial idea, like, oh, I'm going to stop all this bad stuff from happening. And he's like, oh shit, I can't stop this from happening. So there has to be another way. So he glimpsed the greater truth, which is that, oh, oh a reality, it's just a dream, but it's not your dream. It's a dream of this chaotic entity that spins madless, uh, you know, maddenly, uh, endlessly at the at the in, at the center of the universe. All of this, all of you, all every decision you've ever made in your life is a component of its dream, and your dreams are just that. So the moment this thing wakes up, the party's over. And so well. that's when he when he glimpsed this greater truth or the base truth, he decided to let's pull the trigger on this and commit cosmic suicide and just put the whole thing to bed, so to speak. Now you are it's starting to dawn on you why he's been foiled so many times is because, well, Barnabas, or the entity that inhabits Barnabas, that inhabit, inhabits all of your bodies eventually, is at, the, is at the center of this. If you destroy him, well, it creates paradox, and on and on it goes. Yeah. Time's weird um... like that. Let's kind of avoid the winding gyre the center cannot hold and the whole blood tim tides drowning the innocent. I mean, I disapprove of that on principle. 
we've established that it's possible that um, Barnabas might, pardon me, not Barnabas, the entity within Barnabas that is part of a collective entity that currently still contains Winnebago too, but also all of us. Okay. Anyway, you're possibly the, the safety seal on all of this. Do you actually want to survive? Everybody turns to the barnyard bus. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, hmm. Barnabas lingers on that for a solid 12 seconds or so. <laughs> it's got to end eventually. Does it? Tired. It's got to end soon. So basically what's going to happen is we're going to force you to stay on life support. Okay, got it. Or you live keep fast, in mind die that we're young. We're not going to respect your consent either way, because none of us want to die. Because we have an inborn survival instinct. Well, I describe it as the urge to breathe, except I have that urge in water too, which you guys would grow. Morlock uh, elaborates a little bit further on what he was uh, initially saying. It's like, well, if we destroy him, we destroy John Cross, at least for now. Uh, uh -huh. Well, the entity is from the future. It arrived here from who knows when. Uh, oh. So it has advanced knowledge of what can happen. He could oppose us if we tried to stop his plan. Important but, question for you all. How many of those pills did you let her take? The other component, of course, is you can kill me. And now that that raises all sorts of alarm bells in your brain as well and you're like why <laughs> and he's like because i communed with john cross early on so we are of similar mental capacities you can say he is however more powerful than i well, if we go life. to if we have if we try to prevent his special plan from taking place he will oppose us all and if he had with him with us having communed mentally he could take control of me that makes me a liability he says and he pulls out a fucking sword <laughs> and you know what sword i'm talking about this is the sword of corvaz he puts it on a table in front of all of you and he's Isn't like the harry carry and Sabuku are the same word it's interesting to know actually um he's like you can take the, you, you can have the entity inhabit me now take my memories get rid of my body otherwise what you saw back in that vision inside of its head how he manipulated people got them moving around like marionettes same thing could happen to me and you don't want me as enemy oh you've always been the enemy warlock that's something we all acknowledge <laughs> Number one on on uh, uh, Walter's kill list. <laughs> See, the principle of it is that we, with the exception of, of course, our dear academic friend, who is precious and must be protected from everything, I don't think any of us really like each other, except for you, Jack. You're very pretty. But anyway, <laughs> anyway, what I'm trying to say is... Killing Warlock and killing the Entity are both removing one of the weights that's involved in the process. And I mean, theoretically, your sanity will eventually run out. But at that point, are we ruling out time travel and traveling back to when John Cross was born and removing him from the sickle entirely? Because we keep doing random moving back and forth. And if all of reality is contained within the cycle, Generally, if we're talking about killing children, I want to also establish that Carlos Rivera over there is not, in fact, John Cross. I mean, I would suggest translating what Carlos and Rivera mean, just in case, because people do stuff like that. I have an out-of-character uh, question. Sure. Does anyone in this group object personally to killing children? Like, as a person? Uh, Agent Wild would. No, but, like, but like it's Ambrose object to killing. Oh, <laughs> no, that's not one Above of my table, out of character. Kind of As a... Let's not animals. It if it, uh... Animals would bother me. 
As a player, I am opposed to killing real children. Imaginary children in a Cthulhu horror story are kind of what I expected in the game. Yeah. Okay, Let, let's go. Uh, what? Yeah. Sure. That we're all... We weren't just discussing something that we couldn't do or upset. Yeah, me. no, no. This yes, is the way that I I'd am. put it. In real life, no. In Skyrim, please, God, yes. <laughs> I'm not entertained by the murder of children, and I accept that I have instincts to think they're precious, but imaginary children that are the equivalent of baby Hitler, well, even though I just god went the thread, you get what I'm going with. We at Vorpal Tales do not condone the murder of actual children. Wait, wait, wait. wait. Vorpal Tales, you wouldn't travel back in time and kill baby Hitler? Eh. Mm. That's a weird hypothetical. I'm not going to get No, into I would it. get him into art school. <laughs> anyway, um, I don't think anyone's going to need to OK check out of it. We're mostly establishing how many people do we possibly need killing? How can we be sure? And would this be easier done by destroying the artifact? Or is the artifact another immutable? And the answer to all our collective problem is basically just keep the flight spinning in the air and hope for the best. <laughs> so, spinning plates. Agent Wild is skittish about murdering the children's, even if they're evil. But you not, see, not uh, the player. Yeah, you see, um, Warlock's like, well, he's like, uh, I don't, I'm not convinced that either, either of these children are evil. I just think that they've been indoctrinated by John Cross. They've been shown the greatest truth and they're scared. He took, he purposely targeted them because they were vulnerable and he warped their minds. Uh, you can, I think even any of you can see how someone with his, abilities can do something like that so Listen, here's how I of us is the most persuasive slash best parent i think our dear academic could probably talk one child out of ending the world uh white lady what kind of mom are you hold on hold on hold on, <laughs> hold on. i got people that are all about child psychology we can put them in home. No, 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 no. Not we brainwashing. Can... Parenting. I <laughs> we, don't, we don't brainwash. It's not MK Ultra. No, 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 no. Maybe you don't like those words, but that's still what you get. There is a Parenting. simple solution to making the child into an obedient adult. Speak softly and carry a big stick. <laughs> American way. Great White Navy. <sighs> We probably don't want to kill any children if we can avoid it. We'll try talking to the children first. We know Carlos Rivera is one child. Do we know who the other child is? There are several. You know of, you know of them, especially uh, Jeff. Uh, one of them you Does Gina I, know? you could say that you yeah you could you could say that you jailed the one that you uh, uncovered as that serial killer uh, years back, or that you had to take him down. They didn't appear as a as a child though. But they reappeared. They were like almost adult age, pretty much almost right about adult age, young adult. I've got a couple of names. Okay, so maybe what we do is this: we get together a list of everybody, and we go to them and we tell them that they're very special and important, and we give them something more interesting to do than ending the world that gives their life meaning. Like, yeah, I mean. Warlock. You're good at the cult thing, right? And if that doesn't work, there's always academia. <laughs> I, I don't know what He looks at you blankly. He's like, I don't need to do the cult thing anymore. Well, I mean, would you just do it to stop the end of the world? I mean, make an exception. Think about it getting the back. What are we talking about when we say the end of the world? <laughs> Come on. Cult stopping the end of the world is like. The exact opposite of what most of them want to do. You'll be a rebel. <laughs> oh, uh, roll a, a D10, uh, Panda, and add that much to your occult and your unnatural. That's what you gain from Agent Garfunkel and by uh, consuming his brains. Does she also get the terrifying last moments of Garfunkel? 
Of course. <laughs> Unfortunately, I'll I the replay only got a two out of that, which kind of sucks. You can roll again. Uh, the second one could be to, uh, you, you can pick and choose if you want to add up uh, and a nine occult. On the other one. So what were those two stats? Occult and unnatural? Occ yeah, occult and unnatural. Well, I got a 55 and unnatural. Oh no, you just roll 1d10. Just roll 1d10 and add that to uh, the skill. Like you, you've upped oh. that skill by that much. Yeah. Hey, you have a 55 and unnatural? Yes. You realize that this is not even the highest on this team. Warlocks was like 70, Does I think. Does Warlock count beyond an NPC at this point? I mean, that's that's what he is at this point, yeah. So, so <laughs> he, he is and the that's voice also of another reason why he's like, um, you may want to kill me next <laughs> before you do anything else, unless right. you, know, you have other ideas. <laughs> I, he, he set the sword down, right? Yeah. I, I just uh, he's like, if if anybody wants to take up the blade, I can show you how to use it. And he says that in a, a, a certain way. It's like you know he's gonna dig his hands, his fingers into your brain, and just give you like instant knowledge dump on how to use the court, the sort of provas. Right. Like the I'll just stick him with the pointy end. Yeah, I, I'm just gonna. Oh, skip there's many that. other ways to use that. I just want to skip that step. I'm just gonna look at him and say, "Really?" And he's when not, he well, he he he, rec he recognizes that he could be a, a very big liability moving forward. Like if John Cross could just take control of him, he'll incinerate everybody in this room. What's it gonna feel yeah, like? If John awesome? Cross could do that, he already would. Well. Maybe he's just waiting for the Juice light. Me. And At I'll just point... pick it up. Sorry. Juice me. Remember, what, one of the things that John Cross was trying to teach you inside of uh, the headspace was that death was the only way out. And he was trying to train you into being able to kill without remorse because that's what's necessary. Not just for killing of yourself or potentially for killing of other people as well. You have to be okay with that in order to execute the special plan. Well, we're kind of doomed then because White Lady can't die. <laughs> do you what you want him to do? How you want to proceed? Warlock. He's given you two way outs, it, it, or well, two Warlock. possibilities: kill Barn, kill Barnabas, and the entity inside of him, kill kill him. Well, uh, do that thing destroy to my the uh, the object as it currently loss. exists. Kill the kids, no. whatever you want to do. Warlock, we create um, merely the extension of whatever Warlock is, because in order to Warlock to pass on the information, his holy mission, he will then merely be copying himself onto someone else. Well, that's what I was going to say. I was just going to say, I was going to pick up the sword and just stab him through and through and just not even get I mean, this may not be the best place to do that, <laughs> but he's saying, like, whoever wants to pick up the blade, I'll, I'll show you how to use it. To, to good effect. Listen, but somebody you, somebody has to make blade, a decision. You pick do up my the brain. blade, and then what? To, and then whether to keep him around, or, and to keep around the entity that inhabits Barnabas. You have a decision to make. Thoughts, tick everyone. Talk, tick tock. You just, t I just take his hand, just put him on my head. Just, just do it. Just do it. I want to feel this. Just do it. <laughs> And Kill I'm him just playing little... with the sword right now. <laughs> <laughs> you like, he she's like, this is much bigger than my knife. <laughs> it's a burrito knife. <laughs> I, I think I'm all in favor of doing all murdering outside of an area where quiet is required. Say I. <laughs> I still get to do the murdering. Sure. <laughs> we really have to. I mean, like, if we have to murder someone, we're gonna do it. But yeah, I mean, ultimately, I agree, you could just shouldn't kill him. You could, <laughs> you could just I set mean. him on a plane to the other side of the the world or whatever. He can't do shit from there, you know. There's a lot of different ways you can go about doing this. Obviously, he's saying he's a liability, and so immunity is is John Cross essentially. So, like, what are you gonna but do? Why don't we have have Warlock confess to all the nonsense that we did? and get in prison somewhere where he's taken off the map after teaching people. That way we don't have to kill him. We get it all sorted out. We can fish him out later. 
Oh, to like Huzzah. physically incarcerate him and so on. I, I still right. get the sword. I'm I'm game with this. I get, okay. I get the sword. White lady's got the sword. I want the sword right. knowledge though. <laughs> Are you gonna buddy up with the white lady? No, no, no. You're doing it wrong. You gotta do it this way. No, he just wants to feel what um, it's like. Oh, do you? You just want to. You just want your brain to have fingers in it. Yeah. <laughs> brain One of our primary. Issues. Careful what you asked for. You have a very so... strange fetish. Fetish. I mean, just you're so excited I mean... about having fingers in your brain. Are you not? <laughs> no. <laughs> Only spiritually, in my case. So, what? I think we can duly note that we will be sending Warlock to prison while he will take responsibility for our evil deeds so that we can move more clearly. I've got some federal contacts I can arrange this all with. That sounds mm. very useful. I have nothing whatsoever, but I have a bus pass. No, I, I can get the fee covered. U.S. Okay. Marshal kind of thing. Warlock, are you okay with solitary confinement? What were you asking? Warlock, are you okay with solitary confinement? Oh, sure. I can walk out of there anytime I want. Okay, that doesn't work, though. We have to send you to basically the opposite side of the planet because you decided that you might be a danger to us, so you should be removed from our company. What would you prefer? Seems like it's your choice. You like Hawaii. But Hawaii. Yeah, federal penitentiary in Hawaii sounds like a good idea. No, no, no. <laughs> I'll get you on a plane to there now and then anywhere you want from after that. Why not New Zealand? I'm pretty sure that's the furthest away from us right now. Uh, let me send you some information concerning the... They got this weird extradition policy. We don't really want to mess with that. In case this dude does take him over. Uh, one second. Let me send you some information concerning the sword. It's a lot. <laughs> it's a lot of information. Uh, okay. Oh my There's god. That one. No, that's just the first part. There's a lot. What? <laughs> In which the player gets sand damage. Yes. Uh, hold on. One thing at a time here. Uh, <laughs> so much information. I gotta send it to two different people here, potentially. So hold on a second. Uh... Uh, DB is damage bonus. Um, yep. Time. <laughs> uh, let me get to the rituals. Rituals are cool. Get all that in there. I have to like copy and paste it in chunks. <laughs> that made it. There you go. Funny fun times. Holy shit. Okay. So, <laughs> fucking yeah. So, so the two of you, if you both want to know how to use the sword, then you both get the information dump, which means you both have to make a sanity check. <laughs> oh no, like I said, I'm not going for the info dump. This is all now just okay. my own player knowledge. You're just like, I, I want a sword to swing around. Fuck that nonsense. It is a bigger sword that uh, White Lady has seen a lot of cool things happen with. I mean, even if it doesn't happen, it's bigger than this knife that we've got. It's true. Um, Morlock's like, yeah, that's fine. You want to lock me up somewhere far away? That's probably for the best. Yeah. Hey, uh, and it's like, uh, however, know. that's not going to... If he does take control of me, he could use my ability to reach out with my mind and set people aflame, give them, you know... You hey, may no, have to put me under. It might yeah, be better no, to just that. put that's me under. Hey, weirdo. Completely. And he's pointing at him. Or kill me. I need those pills. And he's like, either either way, this is going to repeat itself. Well, we, we could if just we fail. You in a medically induced coma, couldn't we? Could try that. I mean, who flies unmedicated work. these days? Even dogs do <laughs> that. I'm pretty sure that if you're using your federal connections, you can just argue that he's too dangerous to be allowed to be conscious. Given the quantity of murders and horrifying things we've been adjacent to. Part of us, was there something that you wanted to do? Hmm. 
<laughs> yes. Yes, there is. Okay. Proceed. Yeah. Is Warlock drinking anything at the moment? You don't think you've Were ever we... seen Warlock drink or eat anything? Never... <laughs> huh. That's weird. Okay, on to plan B. Spitting time. <laughs> okay. Barnabas gets up, abruptly walks over to Warlock, spits on him. Warlock's No like, explanation. He just looks back at you calmly like, okay. <laughs> Barnabas then goes to sit back down. I will also spit on him to be part of the group. <laughs> it's like, what the hell? <laughs> Everybody looks at Barnabas like, what the hell is that? <laughs> Um, an unnatural check. Let's make I, an unnatural check. I Let's believe he just spit like black stuff into him. Mm-hmm. I believe I that Barnabas just it. compromised Warlock. Can I kill him now? <laughs> you see the the spit take off, take on this like uh, icker like demeanor, and it, like just like the the stuff that you saw before, Agent Wild. It sort of like twitches and crawls and slithers up Warlock's nose and you see Warlock's eyes like roll into the back of his head. Agent Jeff, roll me a sanity check please. I was going to say as it starts moving uh, for up, the I'm brain like knowledge. Taser. Yes, and what's happening right okay. now, yes. <laughs> Can I apply my taser you get a two for at this moment when it's supposed uh, to I got a 13 on the hit. first one and a 22 on the second. Both are successes. Okay, uh you lose uh D4 for the entity and one for the info dump. Um, Anemone, you ready your taser? <laughs> You're like, oh shit, it's going down for real. Yeah, my goal was to tase the thing before it went because he wasn't supposed to be compromised. We just agreed to send him to prison and now he's joining the party club instead. So since I know that electricity uh -huh. stops it from White Lady um, and I'm not mm. too fond of um, non-consensual body invasions, I proceed to attempt to tase the spot it's on. I might fail and tase poor Warlock, but it's the principle of the thing. He's He's got his back to you, so he's not expecting, especially you, to do that. Um, uh, yeah. Hey, if he said he was he, enthusiastic uh, about it, I might have listened to him, but he's just going yeah. to sit here and let it happen thing. Well, he's just, he's kind of distracted at the moment because this guy just got up and spit in his face, but then, like, yeah, you you put up, you, you used it the, the um, use the taser on him. He just kind of twitches and like falls to the ground for a second, and just kind of uh, uh, falls forward. Did I He's unconscious. In the entity that was trying to get on him that was squirming him on him, or did I just accidentally tase him? Everybody looks at Barnyard Bus now. What the hell was that? You also get that question uh, in your headspace, uh, Barnyard Bus. The, the collective is is you know around the table like. What the fuck? Like they're throwing up their arms. Like what? What the hell are you doing? The entity uh, has directly absorbed Warlock. The time for play is over. Now is the time for action. What the hell That's does that the mean? Only somebody answer. asks. Is that said aloud? <laughs> yeah, it says it aloud. I'm holding the gun out. Oh, oh I was gonna say I, I'm I'm holding the big knife now. <laughs> I think it's time for me to use a big knife. Also. Oh, I excellent. I guess we use the taser, since if we kill him, it's like <laughs> reality. Everybody starts drawing weapons and stuff, Agent Wild. You're just looking at everything devolving right in front of you. Uh, inside of your headspace, uh, Barnyard Bus, you hear a very familiar voice. Ah, oh, this is just like the previous times. Here we go again. <laughs> we never learn, do we? Everybody's like, oh shit, what are, we, what are we doing? And you see Barnabas, actual Barnabas' uh, personality is like, you can't do this. He's yelling at a Muppet, like sitting on the table. Uh, he's just like, um, this is exactly what he wants. Don't you see that? How do you respond? So in the physical world, Barnabas is just sitting blank faced, stares at the whole rest of the cell, the rest of the party. Mm -hmm. Barnabas responds to Barnabas with, 
did you consider that now what he wants is what I want to? He isn't you. We're not, he inhabits the space, but he is not, he doesn't speak for all of us. And he looks around, he kind of gestures to all, all the different personalities that are there. The, the people in the room included. Mm. So versions of yourselves, future versions of yourselves are there in the, as part of the menagerie. And you can speak to Barnyard Bus, however you like, uh, and petition. Uh, because remember oh. what uh, he had said before, is like only together could you potentially defeat John Cross. I would argue that as a hemispheric life form, being able to understand the collaboration is very important. There are two halves of any given being, whether they be of my kind or a regular human, and they work in concert. I have a question for everyone. What is this? <laughs> this is something that happens sometimes. Just go with it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> hey, wait, Children's who's the guy in the hat? man is gone on rogue and is trying to destroy reality because he's gotten bored. He got bored. Go ahead. Let's hear all the heartfelt plea. Uh, you, sorry. <clears throat> you hear John's voice over the, the raw din, and he's just like, go ahead. Make your heartfelt pleas for the continuance of this horror show that you call your lives. John, you motherfucker, come out here. John, do you need a hug? <laughs> like, do you it's need a, a nice, hug? Thick I'm asking that seriously. Paper cut through the spine. <laughs> so you're all in concert with one another in in the headspace, so you can communicate with each other in this way. Meanwhile, things are playing themselves out in real time outside of the headspace, but obviously you can take as much time as you want in your own head to have this discussion. It'll last, you know, that long in real time. Who's the puppet? In the I Barnyard bus. am Barnabas. You see that's Winnebago Barnabas. is like, that's the, f he's a, he's a Muppet. He's a fucking Muppet. He's the, you hear him say, he's the guy with the bucket hat. <laughs> He just starts going through his pockets looking for drugs. I just hand him the <laughs> bottle of painkillers. This is probably when when a bago says steps up and says something. He's like, you know, like we lasted, you know, twenty thousand years, not because of one person deemed it, because you know, life just goes on, man. We always find a way. Life always finds a way. All right, we got to do this for. Uh, make to make the world safe and and for fucking donuts, man. Okay, for fucking donuts. But life's so boring. I've lived <laughs> so many of your lives. It's oh, wake up at nine, go to, to office, up. get lunch, leave work, go home, hug person, hey, you, go to bed. You it's help boring. raise my daughter, asshole. Does my daughter's life mean nothing to you? I mean. Our daughter was wonderful. Yeah, what was her name? He asked you. Annette. Oh, you actually remember. <laughs> I remember right, all the so... names of the children I've taken care of, and they're all gone. All of them. No, they're not. They're all here. Julia, Annette. I mean, not here. I didn't get to them in time. Didn't no, cross my anymore. many minds. Okay, I'm gonna hug the Muppet. <laughs> Hugs the Muppet. Aww. I don't know if this will help and it will merely lead to my decay, but while I'm hugging the Muppet, I will say, as the tide moves in, the tide moves out. It is a rhythmic pattern, but with it come the eggs. With the eggs come the young. With the young come life. They spawn, they live, they bring. Their songs rise. Each mm -hmm. song may seem like a repetition, but together they make the motion of the water. I don't think it's a very persuasive argument, but I am hugging the monks. Hmm. This three-foot puppet of a man, 
throws no, arms but around you. welcome to try to kill me. No, I mean, they're going to try to kill you now. All of us. You see here, John Cross's voice in the boardroom. And he's like, it happened like this before some other times. I'm wondering how it's going to turn out this time. Uh, it's like it. <laughs> okay. So, yeah, you see in both uh, the headspace and in real time, Agent White Lady heaves the sword, looks at Barnabas, and goes to run him through with the blade. So you see this happening in both sets, senses of the word, in the headspace, and it's happening in real time as well. So those of you who are in the room, with the exception of perhaps Barnabas, can react to this and however they like. Warlock, of course, is on the floor unconscious because he got tased <laughs> like, like like crazy. So, how do you I proceed? Mean, she's not contributing uh, much to this conversation. Uh huh. My meat self is trying to prevent the murder of the Barnabas um, shell that's holding everything. Though killing him really wouldn't do anything other than put goo in the middle of the room, which theoretically would need to get a shot back. From. So actually. Instead of trying to stop this murder, that would occur to me, and I would immediately go to wherever the um, library's um, janitorial closet is in their vacuum, because the last time we killed the body host, we got a gooey thing. <laughs> and if we can keep it properly contained, then it really can't do jack shit to anything. You're like, oh shit, let me go get the wet back. Something's about to happen here. Uh, and yes, you leave the I'm room. You're the first in initiative, by the way. Like, White Lady is dead last in terms of like being able to act quickly. So as soon as you see her like whipping out the sword and moving towards Barnabas, you have an opportunity to act in the real space, in meat space. Uh, I remember that Barn the only person being murdered here is Barnabas's separate consciousness piece. This entity is immortal and would need to have the gooey thing that it is further destroyed. Ergo, mm. Shockback is about the only thing that'll temporarily contain it. <laughs> Shockback, you go run them in, you and go then run them that back. And so, <laughs> yeah, okay, so you run out of the room and you're like, oh shit. Uh, next in initiative is Barnabas. Agent White Lady hoists up the sword, um, but you're kind of in the middle of your headspace at the moment. Uh, give me a, give me a power roll. Let me know if you get it. I gotta flip through the pages. Meanwhile, Winnebago is just cussing John out, like, you're just a, you're a bitch, man. Like, and he looks like Optimus Prime with a Hawaiian shirt and the bucket hat. And he's just like, fuck you, man. You know, he's like giving him what to. And John's just like, ha, 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 ha. okay. That is a seven. You got a seven? I yeah, I you can react. I think just I like, with, with John Cross whispering in your ear, you snap back. And yeah, white lady's coming at you with the sword to run you through. How do you react? Spit at White Lady. Oh shit! <laughs> Patui. Um, okay, give me a dodge roll, uh, White Lady, <laughs> to not get hit with the uh, the icker. See what is my dodge? I have a decent dodge. Let's oh see, a forty-four. That is under my dodge, which is a fifty. That is a critical success. So yeah. You go, you do, you do the long, and like this, like long stream of black stuff just comes like out of your mouth, and oh shit, he managed to move out just in time to avoid it. Uh, and now goes Jeff. Welcome, Jeff. Jeff uh, is gonna pull out one of his cans of chili and then threaten to open it. <laughs> what? I found it in a green box. Nobody knows what it does. <laughs> I will open this and doom us all. You you have a claymore, you know, right? Listen, <laughs> the, the can of chili yet. is much more threatening at this point. <laughs> okay, so like, do you hit him in the head with it? Or like, what are you doing? With I was, it? I'm pulling out my gun. <laughs> you're pulling out your gun, yeah. you're pointing it at uh, Barnabas? Ah. Uh... Just kind of swinging it around the room wildly. 
You're like, huh? Ah! Why is this guy like, so calm? Panic, pointing at Wild. <laughs> okay. So you're like holding the whole room hostage now, pointing guns at everybody. Mm -hmm. uh, Warlock's a KO'd. Uh, Agent Wild. Was this it? Was this the whole, the whole idea, the whole time? It wasn't about the kids. You just wanted to contaminate all of us. We're your army. Were you the- I'm Starting to hear that music in the background, Jeff. Sorry, go ahead. Were you the villain this whole time? And so, Agent Wild kind of cracks just a little and dives for him. Oh, with or without a weapon? Uh, without. He's just, okay. he's not thinking right now. <laughs> Are you diving towards uh, White Lady or Barnabas? Barnabas. Oh, give me an unarmed, please. And just to make sure first, you're okay with the PvP? Okay. One does not spit on two people and expect to survive. <laughs> Valid. Jeff does Thank you for time. asking, but yeah. yeah. <laughs> Where is my unarmed? Oh, okay. There it is. Fell in the janitor closet somewhere. Bottom floor cleaner, Bob, various things getting thrown. You find the wet back. Congratulations. Oh. You start like grabbing it, and the librarian's like, Excuse me, uh, hello, you gotta sign that out. And you're just like rushing back in. It's an emergency. Do you want to be cleaning three gallons of fecal matter up? <laughs> what? <laughs> that's the I use because that's the best thing you can show to get someone to decide it's not their problem. <laughs> yeah, agreed. That's genius. What'd you get, Ambrose? I got, I got, I got a 79 out of a 40. Oh. So, the former U.S. Ranger uh, that you go to tackle just easily sort of, like, pushes you aside and lets you try and, like, tackle him to the ground. I mean, this guy's solid. He's built like a linebacker. So, you, when you go to tackle him, you just you cut, grab him around the mid-waist uh, area and try to, like, Kill him over, and he ends up just like pushing you to the ground instead. Um, white lady, last one standing. Somebody's waving a gun around in your face, and you just don't care. What are you doing? I'm stabbing Barnabas. All right, give me melee. And your and specialty or with surgery, a whichever is higher. Thirty-five. Is. Thirty-five. That is that is a success. Um, because, uh, you can, well, you can, um, and, uh, Barnabas and, can opt not to act on his turn, or they can, and try to, like, dodge or parry your blow, uh, fight back is what it's called, or use a, you know, unarmed to basically, you know, uh, struggle with you, or they can take the hit, and when it's their turn, they can act. What do you want to do, Barnabas? Barnyard I think I'm taking the hit. Mm -hmm. In the hit? All right. So you successfully and hit with the Sword of Corvaz. Roll the appropriate damage, please. And I was going to say, I have no, my character having no idea is just going to try and oomph whatever they think possible, willing it into existence <laughs> to try and do more because oh, she seems what's that? willing it. You're willing it, but you don't know how the powers work. Remember, you just want. I have uh, no idea. Sword. I just want a shiny sword, and I want it to do something. That's all I know. I want. Well, to do it's definitely moment. doing something. Go ahead and roll your damage. All right. So, <laughs> what? What's the damage bonus? It's uh. Damage bonus is whatever your character has. The damage bonus it might be like plus one or plus two or something like that Wait, if you're exceptionally okay. strong. Well, that is a five, so five plus one plus one, so my strength is 65, so yeah, plus one. Uh, so okay. that's uh, seven. Seven damage. Uh, 
Go ahead and lose a point of uh, power permanently, Devin. Okay. Because you wanna, you really wanna stab the shit out of Barnabas. Mm -hmm. So what? You 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 take however damage you just said directly to your hit points, Barnabas, and that's even with armor because you see as he's swinging, as she's swinging the blade around at you, it starts to heat up. Like it starts like lighting up, like it's on fire almost, and it just cuts right through your armor and it sears your flesh as soon as it touches it. It hurts, and like the agony is exquisite. Exquisite, you said. Mm. How much damage? Just quick reminder. Devin, how much damage? Seven. 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 Wow. That's not. That's not nothing in Delta Green. <laughs> I wanted a shiny sword for a reason. <laughs> okay, now it's Barnabas' turn. How do you react? All right, here we go. Somebody's like, Barnabas. Jeff is like, ah, <laughs> Barnabas falls to the floor, mm -hmm. turns around, sticks a hand out, and starts yelling, wait, 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 no, don't do this, wait. Trying to act as human as possible. Oh shit. In a vain attempt to appeal to your humanity. White wow. lady stabs again. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Uh, you can yep. make a uh, psychology roll. If anybody has that collectively, you could use the skill uh, or persuade or well, the group's highest persuade skill. You could use it at that level. I only got a 21. Don't let me roll. I have a 60. Uh, got, I got, got a, a 60 persuade? 30 Jeff? for the psychology. <laughs> That's cool. You have a 60 plus percent chance of making a persuade roll, Barnabas, to get a uh, white lady to back off <laughs> or to think that you're not just, Barnyard Bus at the moment. I, I rolled one. I rolled one and persuade. I rolled one. Are you shitting me? Mm -hmm. Oh, fuck. All right. Well, wait, you're rolling it? <laughs> wait, am I? I don't. I I'll take I that roll. We are all Barnabas uh, today. Uh, no. All of us is using our skills from yes. us. Our greatest skill set. <laughs> no, I thought this was for me. No. <laughs> Sorry. No, you can't. Sorry. Have it. I'll say that if you if you want to use your turn next turn to use persuade to keep somebody from lopping somebody else's head off, then yeah, I'll, I'll accept that roll because that doesn't happen very often. <laughs> That's fine. Uh, but you have a 67% chance of success, uh, Bond. I have a 61 what percent chance? 60. Just 60? Okay, I rolled a 66. Ooh! Uh, matched failure. Ooh. You're like, please don't kill me. Oh, no, don't, do <laughs> don't do oh, it. Oh, no. You'll yeah. never kill me. <laughs> Excellent. Uh, and that is your, is that the extent of your turn? Like you're just feigning. That was the attempt. Barnabas tried to act like Barnabas and instead acted like uh, <laughs> King James. If only I had up. a reroll. If only, if only if I had only a reroll. If only had a reroll. <laughs> oh. uh, Anemone comes back in with the shot back. Uh, these people are still in each other, or you're on your way back rather, and like you're just about to get to the doorway when you see this happen. Um, see uh you can act still like you can run in and bop somebody on the head or something like that or make a skill check whatever you want to do i'm gonna look for that patch of spit that got put on the carpet that missed someone and back it yeah. it's moving because it's like it's yep. probably been moving all the time <laughs> i move faster than it and i'm going to put a hand up to encourage um our recent convert to our menagerie it's okay the more you panic, the worse it gets. <laughs> to Jeff. Start vacuuming. <laughs> Excellent. Uh, Barnabas did his thing. Jeff. I'm going to shank the one with the sword in my switchblade. You're going <laughs> to shank White Lady? Yes. Oh, shit. Wow. Listen, uh, I have a all right, so you put a switchblade and you're just like, sell you go for it. To the program. Oh. Do what? Oh. 
he's uh well it's he's resorting to like the the program you know like oh the outlaws are out of control stab <laughs> oh okay so, so go ahead and make your melee roll so i'm gonna use my one of my re-rolls because i just rolled a 99. oh good lord <laughs> and that's a 15. much better roll yeah. um you White Lady, you can forego your uh, round and fight back and try to dodge or parry out of the way, uh, out of this knife that Jeff is bringing to this fight. Uh, White or you Lady can take is the going hit. to get stabbed, and after getting stabbed, just glare. <laughs> oh shit. Roll your damage, sir. Four. That's Four fine. damage. Mm. Shit. All right, take, taking it for the team. Uh, Agent Warlock, still snoozing. Uh, Agent Wild. Everything is deteriorating right before your eyes. Is this part of the special plan? That's, I'm, yeah, snooze like it. God damn it. Uh. So, I would like to survey the situation around me. Sure the player so can you please describe what this scene looks like right now uh it's yeah it's a complete mess so uh on the far side of the room and this little uh conference room in the back of the library anemone is is scooping up some black goop that got onto the wall because it missed uh white lady initially uh then there's white lady herself uh, attempting uh, you know vigorously to try to hurt uh barnabas Barnabas is sort of up against the wall and he's like feigning uh, innocence at her feet. Uh, to the right, of, to the left of Agent White Lady is Jeff, who's now pulled out a switchblade with his other hand is like, you know, trying to like gut her and managed to, to successfully stab Agent White Lady. And now she's all kinds of pissed off. Like, like Linda Hamilton, I'm gonna kill your ass uh, from T2 uh, kind of glare. Um, <laughs> and then there's you. <laughs> You're closest to Barnabas because you just tried to body check him last last uh, round. Uh, do I have anything to write on? Oh shit! Um, I'm gonna say yes. You're an I anthropologist. Heard. You keep you keep stuff with you all, all the time to take notes and stuff like that. And you're in a library, so sure, I'm gonna say that's the possibility. Yeah, go ahead. I'm gonna draw the banishing symbol. The Elder Sign? Yes, in blood. Blood? Spend a point of power permanently? Okay. And then roll percentile. Let me know what you get. Where's my power points? They're there. Please do another awesome roll now that it's actually my turn, Dice. <laughs> 18. 18. Nice. All right, that's great. Um, oh, God, that's right. Okay. I don't know if that's good or bad right now. <laughs> okay, excellent. One second here. Gestured in the air. Okay. It may be inscribed permanently in the surface. Okay. Long lasting. Okay. You must have an appropriate craft skill. You made it at a cost of two power. Sorry, you you lose two power, and you lose one d six sanity. One d six. Five, 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 five. <laughs> Three. Yeah. Three. Okay. Oh boy, power loss. So That's fatal. I am down to 33 sanity. My breaking point is 26. Uh, Why do you have so much sanity? <laughs> because the player isn't a very risky player. Where do you hold you the Elder books. Sign? What do you mean? You you no. dig into your flesh with your fingernails and just cut you cut away like you when blood comes out you start smearing it onto like a table or like what surface are you using to to make the mark uh, you know what i'm not going to use a surface i'm going to use my own hand 
Oh, okay. the opposite so hand um, that uh, yeah. Yes. And I'm just gonna I'm gonna carve it in there. Woo. And I'm gonna oh, smack right. it right on Barnabas's head if. Oh. Okay, Barnabas, you permanently lose two power. <laughs> And we'll continue to lose two power per round for the next six rounds, unless you do something about that and escape the gaze of the Elder Sign. Okay. Well done, Agent Wild. Uh, White Lady, it is your time to shine. <laughs> White Lady is going to once again stab Barnabas. Boy. Uh, with Go a for it. three. Thank you, Patty, but I don't okay. need it yet. <laughs> <laughs> Barnabas, do you want to fight back and forego your next round? I need to fight back. If you want to fight back, choose a skill and roll. Otherwise, you're going to take some damage. Unarmed combat as Barnabas attempts to grab at White uh, mm. Agent White's wrists. Excellent. Go ahead and roll unarmed combat. I would like to use one of my rerolls. Yes. As I have rolled a 96. <laughs> That's fine. That's a 76. I'm rolling with it. Yeah. Oh. You try Can't to grab the, the sword failure. and yeah, you end up getting cut by it as you as like she's just erratically like swinging it back and forth. Warrior damage, uh, Devin. Let me know what you got. All right. And we get That's 6. Six. That's zero okay. HP. Woo! That's it for you, buddy. So okay. describe Good. how you drive the sword into Barnabas and his the light from his eyes uh, go out. So White Lady, while still staring at Jeff, will just walk a step closer towards Barnabas and just drop the blade down, all while just staring at Jeff. Mm. <laughs> Skewer, uh, skewered Barnabas is kind of like, uh, has blood and black stuff like dribbling down his mouth. The body is starting to go into flight or flight mode. Um, this is where you would typically make a power roll and if you succeed, uh, it can keep going. <laughs> Otherwise, the body goes and you have to basically secrete yourself out of Barnabas and choose another host. There's the one right over there and his yeah. name is Warlock. You failed? Huh? Oh. Did you fail your power roll, or did you succeed? I barely succeeded on that power roll, but I'm bailing out of this body. Oh, okay. So yeah, you see Barnabas' body start convulsing, his eyes glass over black for a moment, and you see the this ooze stuff starts like very quickly like oozing and twitching and uh, crawling and sliding. Uh, sliding away from uh, the body as it's now like convulsing on the floor, bleeding out. Uh, and that's the scene that you that you have before you, right before it rolls around to the beginning of the round, which would be Agent Weber. As you turn around and see Barnabas is lying dead on the floor and the entity is, is exiting the body. And that's where we'll go on break. We shall return in 10 minutes time. That's uh, 9.40 uh, Eastern Standard Time. We shall return.
And we have returned from our break, as all hell was breaking loose at the back of this one uh, little library in uh, in Manhattan. Our uh, intrepid investigators were at each other's throats after John Cross had put, planted the idea in their head that death is the only way out of executing the special plan. And now, we return as the Barnabas has died, but the entity that inhabited Barnabas is beginning to secrete itself out of his body and quickly making its way towards its newest hope, uh, its newest host. Uh, the voice inside of your head, barnyard buses of John's. Oh, this is going so well. <laughs> I see that you've prescribed to execute your own special plan. May I make a suggestion? And he kind of like, in your headspace, he's pointing to... Uh, uh, Warlock's strewn body, who, by the way, is starting to wake up and get up off the floor. And he's like, part of us already exists inside of him now, so perhaps choose another. And he looks over at Agent Wild. <laughs> or Agent Jeff. Or Agent White Lady choose one well hmm. backup is on its way uh, so we left off with at the beginning of the round with agent Weber uh, you're seeing this ooze make its way across the floor towards agent uh, warlock as he's starting to become awake now what do you do I have the some of the ooze contained within a shop bag and the rest of the ooze is just part of the same entity, right? Yeah, so it seems that uh, Barnyard Bus has discovered a way to sort of replicate himself, as it were, uh, to, or to maintain a foothold in other people's bodies by excreting the, 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 the ooze out and using it as a weapon, effectively. He got it on Warlock's face, and now it's like, sort of like trying to take control of his brain. I'm going to take a gamble, and I'm going to orbit instead of shop backing it, because I already have a sample of this. And he can live in a test tube or a small bottle. He's easier to contain if I make the rest of it burn up. Oh, okay. Uh, so it, it, you're not going to try to shop back the, the entity as it's it's uh, far right, its way I'll shop back it just for the humor, but then I'm going to be orbiting it if I can catch it, I guess, to cook most of the way. <laughs> okay. So let's do that athletics check. Just to All right. That I was do it. But I feel that orbiting it may be the sensible thing to do to reduce it down as well. <laughs> I got a three. That's good, actually. Okay. Uh, let's see. Okay. Oh, high athletic score. There are some yeah. So, so you put the you put this thing to the uh, the entity, and it's you start scooping up some of it, but like this isn't water. <laughs> uh, it's like this thick oozy mess. It's very reminiscent, as a matter of fact, to the entity that you encountered at Lake Hades. You remember that thing? Yes, it's the same entity somewhat moved forward in time. Yeah. So, yeah, you're like, oh, shit. This is, like, a much more congealed version of this thing. So, yeah, you could scoop up a, quite a quite a bit of it, but you have to get, like, every ounce of it in there. It's probably going to take multiple rounds to do so, but you made the first check, which is good. Uh, what would you like to do with the rest of your round? If I can do anything with my round, if I can take any other 
then... Uh, you can that... move if you wanted to, like... I'm going to uh, get into the best position to scoop whilst not allowing it to try to get at me, follow the principle that if it's a viscous liquid that is difficult to scoop, then it can't move very quickly. Since I mm. imagine it is moving across a library carpet, which is an absorbent high-friction environment. Yeah. And I'm just going to keep scooping it for the time being, since I don't think it would be fair to try to orb what's left. If it's not in the shop vac, it's getting absorbed. Mm. So I'm going to let the rest of the party carry on their pay now. Okay. Um, I would indicate to Daniel um, to get away from this um, and don't get any on you. And um, I'm reacting to it with extreme prejudice. <laughs> okay. Um, because you're now an ooze barnyard bus, you actually go last. Um, however, uh, you're probably the most dangerous thing in this room right now, <laughs> outside of perhaps uh, Agent Warlock with the blade. Um, okay, so the, you're being scooped up, and now it is Jeff's turn. What do you want to do, Jeff? Uh, I put my gun against a white lady's back and pull the trigger. Oh, oh boy! All right, uh, you're because you're that close. You can actually use fight back as an action agent, White Lady. So you could roll uh, unarmed uh, or melee, I believe, or even dodge uh, to fight back because it's with such within such proximity. Uh, the same to by the same token, you get a bonus to hit. Twenty uh, percent. Jeff want shooting that close. <laughs> yeah, so take your shot. If you're gonna fight back, Agent uh, White Lady, now is the time reel. to roll. <laughs> yeah, I got a 27, so I succeeded. I got a 44, oh, so I also succeeded. Oh. Highest success is better, and max success beats anything else. So you got a 44, that's critical success. So okay. How does that work in this? Well, wait, oh, oh, let me see if I can. Reroll that better because I, I still have. I don't think you could do. Oh no. <laughs> let's let's see. Let's see. No. Oh. Okay, that die went everywhere, but not there. <laughs> so normally, it's uh, if you if it's a contested roll, if I'm not mistaken, uh, correct me, Ben. I don't know. Uh, but if if it's a contested, it's not whoever rolls lowest. It's whoever rolls underneath their skill, but at the highest level. I, I believe and... that's the case with this match success thing. Um, yeah, and with, especially with match successes, those are considered critical successes. Like it beats everything else out. Like in so, like traditional Call of Cthulhu, like one fifth was a success, and you were more likely mm -hmm. to do it. But in this case, right. there's a limited number of successes or right. critical successes. Right. What'd you get? No, there? it was just another regular success. Oh shit! Okay, roll your damage doubled, Agent Jeff. You want me to roll it twice or? Um. No, if you roll it twice. Um, uh, it's up to you. I can, can just roll. I can multiply just it by in, two. Yeah, just roll it and multiply it by two. 14. Oh, I'm dead. It's a desert Fuck. eagle. Okay, so Agent, that like you go right up to White Lady as she like turned and glared at you, and you're like, no, boom, and, like the. Oh wait, the, hold on. You said to my of, back. That was a, I was facing you the whole time. I thought you were turned around. What? No, I said I, I said that I was facing you the whole time backwards stabbing Barnabas. <laughs> so you shot me to my face. All right. Oh, shit. All right, so Agent White Lady's face has a hole in it about this big around now as she just goes backwards and falls flat on her back, dead. Oh, boy. All right. Uh, so, Agent Jeff, you, could still, you still have the movement portion of your round if you want to dip out and out of here, or you want to reposition yourself within this room or the library in general. I'm going to go for the... I'm just going to stand in the doorway. You stand in the doorway? Alright, so you just blast her and you move past everybody to get to, over to the door uh, where I think closest uh, would be... Yeah. You get to the back of the room. Uh, now it is... Warlock. Agent <laughs> Warlock awakens. And this little... Uh, this black stuff sort of flashes over his eyes for a second as he scans the room. 
He makes equivalent to eye contact with the entity as it's like sludging its way through uh, uh, from the ground, and he sees it, an enemy like vacuuming it, and he just kind of like, hmm. yep, doesn't retain control. So you see, he kind of like reaches out with his hand, and an enemy goes flying that way. Uh, let's see, telekinesis. And the shot back, go flying. Anemone, you take eight damage as you are flung across the room and you hit the far back wall with the, with the along with the, the shop back. When you look back, Warlock, not Warlock any longer, is standing there holding his hand out. Um, how many points was I down for being shot, or can I work from my base 16? You got a graze. Like, it, did, it wasn't a lot of damage. It was like one or two points okay. of damage. It they were terrible on damage. Left. I'm yeah. gonna follow the general principle that um, I have done my best to contain the entity. I cannot stand and fight warlock slash cross in the same body. However, mm -hmm. the entity seems damn concerned with trying to get itself into it. From here on out, I am getting the fuck away from everyone else as fast as my little uh, web feet can carry me to the nearest body of water that doesn't look contaminated. Hmm. Yeah. I'm evidently important enough that they're trying to contain me in this mess, and I just had the shop back to follow. Wait, so here's my number. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so I'm apparently exiting at the same time as Jeff in this. Business card. Uh, yeah, it's getting the hell out of there. <laughs> Alright, uh, so, yeah, you get flung across the, the room, Agent Wild. Uh, you're seeing this go down around you. What do you, how do you react to this? Is he close to Warlock at all? Is who close to Warlock? Uh, Agent Wild. Uh, be yes, behind you. He's behind you. Gonna smack my carved Elder Sign palm onto his forehead if I can manage to. Okay. Uh, go ahead and. Lose one power. No, he has to make a roll. Okay. Yeah, you see, he loses some as well. Uh, which also reminds me. Six. Ooh. Okay. Uh, Barnyard Bucks lose another two power. He also loses another two power. So, Warlock loses another two points of power, and he's just like, oh, like the, his brain is just like melting out of his ears now. As like the entity is, you're set, essentially like setting it aflame inside of his brain, and just like, oh, uh, he's just ag ag like writhing in pain now. As soon as you put your hand up to his forehead, um, good job, actually. Um, let's see, what are you at power wise, uh, Key? Points of power that you 56. had. No, I mean like you lose two points of power from the initial score. So like if your uh, if your score is uh, power twelve and you lose two, you're oh, at ten shit. and so on. Oh. Yeah. How many are, are you at currently? Oh. You should have lost four. I That's think by now. Infinitely more terrifying. <laughs> uh, yeah, I'm at six power. Hmm. That's not good. Okay. So. Yeah, you, uh, you lost two. He lost two. Which is wild white lady. Rest in peace. Uh, okay, and it's back up to the top of the round. Weber, Agent Weber, are you bolting out of here like as you said before? If I'm seeing the brain melt thing going on, then I think I don't need to necessarily flee the room because it's probably bad policy to leave Daniel behind though they're in the process of heroically sacrificing themselves through ascending into cultish elder knowledge. And therefore <laughs> I will make sure that whatever is in the shop vac cannot get back out again and get the orb posed to um, further blast anything that decides to spew out. And mm. since apparently we're doing this, 
Round two, yeah. Make the athletics roll. Also, you don't have to make a check to know the sign that uh, Agent Wild has essentially carved into their hand and is pressing yeah. up against. Uh, you know that symbol, you, and you know how to use it as I'm well. I'm rolling that. Uh oh. And I got a ten, so I'm okay. You got a ten. All right. All right. So you got you got two out of three. Like you're you're scooping up a, a good portion of the entity as it's just sort of like oozing out and trying to make it uh, make its way around the uh, the bodies on the on the floor here. Um. Barnabas, you have a few things you can do as the entity, because if you recall, you are essentially have a lot of the same abilities as the protomatter entities that the Mygo uh, utilize as their stewards, which means you can do a couple different things. Let me show you. one as you continue to ooze your way on over to uh, your latest uh, choice of uh, victim oh my god oh my god <laughs> That's like me seeing the sword staff. This is not good. <laughs> oh my god. Okay. Uh. Huh. All right. Yeah. I just pick one of these. Wow, okay. I would like to... <laughs> impale. Ooh. Okay. I don't know who to go for, so I'm just gonna roll a d3. <laughs> Let's say you got three targets essentially here. Oh yeah. All right. I'm going to go to impale Agent Weber. Ooh, oh, well, that's gonna hurt. Tendril. You remember this back uh, underneath Lake Hades, uh, Agent Weber, when that thing like protruded this little, small little tentacle and it just kind of like ripped right through you. Uh, it's happening again. Uh, go again. <laughs> uh, let's see. You have I a... Roll I'll let you know here in just a second. One second here. Uh, let me give you your, your stats here real quick. Uh, Mr. Key, so that way you know what your baseline is. <laughs> And so essentially you have a 35% chance to hit. So go ahead and roll that, roll percentile, and see what you get. That's an 11. And yes, you can use rerolls. Yes, apparently they hit with 11. You hit, you hit with an 11? 11. Oh, shit. It looks like we failed to stop the end of the world. I have eight <laughs> That's that's a critical success. Um, yeah. Okay. Looks like the world is so, ending. I did not. I guess so. Uh, a decision was made. Hit, 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 decisions hit. were made. You could oh, try to fight decisions. back against that. You could try to dodge, move out of the way, Anemone. Uh, let's see, and forego your not, next turn. I do not expect to, uh, but I don't want to be uh, murdered. Well, multiple attacks, um, like damage, yeah. Defense, 
to just counterattack and zone it, since that's the most effective thing I have at my disposal? Yeah, you could try to do that, sure, absolutely. That counts. If I can get it contained by zoning it, because there's only a third of it left, it mm. makes sense that it went for me, given that it's in the far end of a shop fax nozzle at the moment. So that would be uh, rolling my unnatural, is it? Because mm. I'm using the. Um. Are you gonna try to like fight back with the shop vac, or how are you doing it exactly? So fighting back with the shop vac isn't going to make much of a difference. I mean, I could try to make an athletics, but I think I've been impaled regardless. However, I'm reasoning there's only about a third of it left that's not sucked into a nozzle, and just leaving the shop vac go is about as best that can be hoped. So since mm. it's attached to me and impaling me, using my other hand with the orb and going through the it seems to be about the best useful. Oh, I see. I see. Yeah. Yes. Go for it. Yeah. Holy shit. Because <laughs> I'm probably dead anyway with eight hit points after getting impaled by Amigo. Might as well give poor Daniel a chance. <laughs> and I succeeded in that with a 45. I'm well below my unnatural, which is currently at a 64. Yeah, you, you zot him back. Okay. With the uh, power if necessary, since this is serious. Roll damage. Okay, what am I rolling damage again? Uh, <laughs> excuse me. Yes. Oh, you're, blasting, you're blasting him with the... Uh, you're yeah. blasting it with the thing, so... Oh. Oh, sorry, it has lethality built in. Yeah, so you, you now you just roll percentile and you tell me what it is. And if it's beneath 25%, you incinerate it. I got 15%. You got a 15? Yep. Oh, well, shit, even... okay. Wow. All right. So <laughs> unexpected shit happens here. Okay. So you, you get impaled by this thing and you're just like, oh, oh, fuck. And like you feel your life draining out of you. And, and one last moment, like you reach down, you grab a hold of the thing and the little spinnerets like come out and they embed themselves into your forearm. You feel like your uh, life force getting drawn into it and you just level it out at it and you fire away and you hit it dead on. Uh, so you both have yourselves locked in this embrace of death, but yours, when it hits the entity, it spreads, the electricity spreads out like a spider web and starts cooking it like live. Like it's, you hear it pop and sizzle and it starts to sort of like catch fire. And the next thing you see is just like this, the smoke rise out of it as it just instantly disintegrates. Just, <clears throat> just gets dispersed completely across the floor like ash. Uh, wow. That's something else. Okay. So, let's see here. Wow. That's even hurt. Uh, key roll 2d20. 2d20? Mm-hmm. Here's your last ability. It's a 24 total. Four? Okay. So that's what. Uh, <laughs> read. Uh, read what I just sent you, and that now you have the reason why you roll two d twenty. All right. So you blast the hell out of this thing, anemone, and the, the thing just completely disintegrates from sight. Uh, it leaves nothing behind except for what you can tell, like dust, ash, and like what seems to be like a billow of smoke. Uh, Agent Warlock. It, writhing in, in agony from the elder sign pressed uh, on his forehead is just like now convulsing and the black stuff is starting to ooze out of his nose and it's just like it, it basically becomes sort of inert it's just like this goo that just sits on the floor and it, turn, it actually starts changing color a little bit it looks almost like gray uh, most of you can't see shit in this room because it's just filled with smoke um, how much damage did you roll for your impale um Key. 16 damage. Oh. I'm dead. Okay. Yeah. 
Do you so have you any missed. armor? <laughs> it's... Uh, I was wearing a ballistics vest. You do have a ballistics vest. Let me just check the impale though, because I don't think. Oh, she oh no, it, the armor right? does count against oh, it. Yeah. Points. I'm pretty sure I'm dead. Yeah, no, but even with that, like he rolled a critical success. Yeah, he rolled a critical hit. Um. Yeah, like that was. Oof. Okay. So. I think I'm a I'm a fishy shish kebab. Oh. Fish kebab. So yeah, you get you get skewered by this thing and you fall to the ground and. Um, jeez, uh, I guess that's it, really. <laughs> the only person left after that uh, would be Barnabas. You don't see hide your hair of the entity. Agent Jeff, you're standing by the door, and you see Anemone get skewered. She falls to the ground. So Agent you, Warlock gets up get and shakes message his head about what I was like, doing? Yes, I did. Okay. You want to continue with that? Absolutely. Oh, shit. <laughs> what are you doing on your turn? You just turn and book me or yeah they did Jeff oh no I'm still eating to set up the set if it's ready I'm using I'm gonna get to minimum safe distance and use it okay so you get the you get away for, for a little bit and set up the thing um agent wild and that's it I think agent warlock gets to roll as well roll alertness please Roll. Oh yeah, both of Oh shit. What'd you get? I rolled a 32, my alertness is 23. I did you want to use a re-roll? Wild, I gave you a re-roll last session for a specific thing. I yeah, <laughs> I want you know wild to live. I'll do it. Someone oh, must survive this. I mean, I well, somebody is well, surviving this. Jeff's surviving it. It's just that we put so much effort to preserving our cinnamon roll, it would be kind of a shame if he died. It was even worse. It was a 48. Fuck. Okay. <laughs> My you don't see it, but low. neither does Agent Warlock. And you see Agent Warlock is like, he, look, it's a, he looks down, he sees like this black stuff all over. He sees everybody's like dead or dying, and he's just like, Agent Jeff is booking it out of the room, and he's like, "We gotta stop it one way or the other. I can give you what I know." Oh, okay. Smoke alarm's I... going off. He's just like, gives gives you the just huge info dump worth of stuff, and then he tries to like lead you out of the room while you're still sort of reeling from all of this. Immediately lose one sanity. As you just, yeah. <laughs> and you can roll, uh, roll a d20 twice, pick the better of the two and add that much to your occult and your unnatural. Well, that's between a 12 or a one. I think I'll go with 12. Yeah. Uh, you see Agent Warlock is like, he starts to try to like, get out of the room and he's like using his his powers to like reach out uh agent jeff you hear the this voice in your head and it's like where the fuck do you think you're going and then you get suddenly get thrown uh thrown to the side you take eight damage as you're flung into a wall <laughs> on the way out of the library like oh and like you're held there too, like you feel this force on you. And then as as he crosses the threshold of the of the of the that little meeting room, an explosion occurs. No one saw the claymore that Agent Jeff set up at the doorway. So Agent Warlock gets filled with shrapnel on his body, goes flying back, hits the wall, and it's a smoking ruin. And as he falls, to the, as he just levitates and then falls flat to the ground, dead. Agent Wild, you are the only person still left alive in this room. Agent Jeff, you're up against the wall like this, like, oh fuck, oh fuck. And then all of a sudden the voice that was in your head gets cut off short and you fall to your knees. You're just like, ugh. The librarian is screaming bloody murder and calling the cops. You know what time it is. Special Agent Darling, FBI. <laughs> Just for giggles, roll exposure, please. This is a fake badge. <laughs> I rolled a five. Agent Wild, 
you run out of that room. Like, what do you do? Like, with everything. Uh, actually, make a sanity roll. <laughs> this, is a, this is where the sanity uh, rules come into play, especially because your entire cell is now dead. And a, a big ass explosion went off next. I rolled a two. I rolled a two. You rolled a two. You made it. <laughs> you only lose one sanity yet again. <laughs> but yeah, all of your bonds, if you had any bonds that were Delta Green specific, they're all crossed off now. Like you're just, you're, you're, yeah, everybody close to you is now dead and you're the only one standing. Uh, how do you extricate yourself from the library? You just run out the fire exit. Yeah, that seems like the best option right now. <laughs> <laughs> you run away as fast as your legs can take you. Agent Jeff, you're like yelling at the librarian, flashing your badge. What'd you get for exposure? Five. Okay, exposure goes up. Mm -hmm. Outstanding. Now it's two. I'm going to say it's automatically three because of the incident that just occurred at the public library. Um, okay. So, uh... The police are on their way. Or do you stick around, I'm or do you book out of there? Also, you're you're late. You're leaving. Oh yeah, this building's probably on fire. Yeah, that room is definitely on fire right now. Take Absolutely. That, books. <laughs> okay. Uh. So, uh, you hear, you you get out of there as fast as you can. The sirens are blaring all over the place. Uh, where does Agent Jeff go to from here, exactly, in his little car. <laughs> uh, I'm gonna try to find a safe house. Wild has. You call this into Gina or Gertrude or one of them? Uh, Gertie, for sure. No, I'm just gonna just skip Gina. Gina doesn't matter to me anymore. Fair. And what do I'm... you tell Gertrude exactly? The Cowboys are done. There was something about John Cross being a part of them, and some sort of oh. entity. Well, I suppose it's about time they did themselves in. Yes, that's exactly what happened. Do we know what's what's supposed to, what they were gathered here to do exactly? Well, they and were how trying to shoot Jean Giles. Was... Oh my. They really have gone off the deep end, haven't they? Mm -hmm. Yeah, they're looking for Carlos. And any other children you know that Cross this... and captured. Do you know where this boy resides? Where you can find him? I'm certain G Agent Gina knows. Excellent. Make sure that we um, scoop him up as soon as possible. Check every known whereabout, every place that he's known to occupy, school, church, you name it. We'll be we'll be uh, meeting with him soon. I'll be I'll be making contact with you as soon as Agent Gina is able to uh, assert our influence, as it were. Understood. Watch for my call. Agent Wild, what would you like to do now as you're leaving the library? Uh... Jeez. If I'd have thought of it, I should have turned around and, and grabbed the metal ball thing. Um, you hear a little voice inside of your head. Oh, God. It's not who you think, though. Having problems? Yes. Don't we all? <laughs> ah. Who Who are you? Who are you? And why? Oh. Oh, oh, you, oh you know who? You know me. We, uh... We met a long time ago in Iran. Uh, oh, you. What do you want? <laughs> well, um, a lot of things, I suppose. Um, but I, I get the distinct feeling through our little connection that you're in a little bit of a bad spot. I can protect really? you, of course. I mean... I don't know if I want anything to do with you. Are you sure? I, uh, well, no, I'm not sure. How are your friends these days, by the way? Dead. Mr. Jackson. Which you oh. should know, 
because you were probably watching this whole time. I felt it. Deep down, I felt it. It was very sad. So, uh, I don't think there's many people on the planet that can protect you, given the sort of trouble that you're currently in. Fortunately for you, I'm one of those people who can. Of course, I don't do these things for free. I'm not a charitable individual. What do you want? Why don't we meet up somewhere? We can discuss terms there. Well, the last time I met up with you, everyone around me ended up dead. Well, then I guess you don't have that to worry about any longer, do you? If you were physically here, I'd flick you off, but, you know, uh, take... That would eh. be amusing. But <laughs> everything's going off the rails. Everything's going fucking crazy. <laughs> so everything's going according to plan. Whose plan exactly? No plan. No one planned jack shit. And that's why we're in this mess. Hmm. I think to differ, I think somebody had a very specific plan in place, and I think you're following right alongside of them. Wait, wait, like right wait. into their hands. Aren't you, you know what on... I'm about. Yeah, aren't you on their side? <laughs> their side? I'm sorry. <laughs> yeah, the... I'm, on... I'm sorry if I gave you the illusion I'm on someone's side. My apologies. Why don't we meet somewhere neutral? I know you're not a religious person, but why don't you meet me over at St. Bart's Church? <laughs> that's funny. Uh, that's the end of the world, Church. Mm -hmm. Is it? I... Yeah. Well, that's news to me. <laughs> right. Okay. Well, you have about 24 hours before something like that happens, so... If you want my protection, I suggest you hurry. I don't... It, it's not It's not your protection I want, it's the, for all this to stop. The, the of ending of the world, and mm. these nightmarish beings. I couldn't agree more. So I guess if I had a side, I guess I'm I'm kind of rooting for you. You and your recently deceased cellmates, of course. Why? <laughs> because it's so funny to hear you say, why? <laughs> See you soon. He'll head to the Major church. Jeff. <laughs> Hello, my friend. It's been a little while since we've uh, broken guy. lunch, as it were. Airplane guy. Right, except that wasn't on an airplane. Oh, it was on. <laughs> Not that time, anyway. Hmm. We were on the tarmac. We were on the, at, the, ah. at the gate. Okay, my mistake. Yeah. A lot has happened I got, lately. I know. I've got more eggs. Would you like some? They were pretty good last time. Where would you... They're even better. Now, now Stephen, I have to ask, who are you working for this time? <laughs> you know, I get asked that question so many times, and it keeps getting well, funnier. Is, every is time it the yellow asks. guy or chaos? I have to know. The yellow guy. <laughs> oh, me and yellow guy go back a long ways, but that's not really that important, is it? I mean, kind of. <laughs> Come on down to St. Bart's. I'm going to have a little powwow down there. And we can sit and talk about the end of the world. It'll be fun. It'll be like uh, old times. Hold on, you're not supposed to eat in church. What kind of trick is this? Says who? Church. <laughs> Just laughs. 
Of course they did. I was like, don't worry, you're not coming alone. I'm gonna make sure you have some play pals down there as well. We'll get this whole business of this yucky end of the world stuff out of the way real soon. I promise. Do you want me to come alone, or do you want me to bring friends? Bring, a, bring everyone you like. The more the merrier is what they say, right? Yeah. Look at the front row seat. All right. Is there a time I should show up by? It doesn't really matter at this point, does it? I mean, I don't want to be there. I, I don't like want to be there too early. I think whenever you or decide to arrive will be just the right time. Wonderful. See you then. <laughs> uh, respectively, you both make your way down to St. Bart's, however you do that. Uh, you're almost compelled to make your way down there, almost as if someone was pulling your strings the whole time. Itchy little hand scratch it as you get closer to the church there's nobody there at least from what what you can tell the lights are on inside though it's very nice interiors and uh in you go it looks kind of like this and you see it's uh towards the back there is what may quite possibly be the biggest church organ you've ever seen in your life uh regardless of what time each of you sort of walk into this place doesn't really matter you both see the same thing however and agent wild in particular is able to see the machine and it's this it's the composite parts the little sigils and uh the little uh etchings that were made onto the metal the same as you found it back in iran the congregation is also here something like over a dozen people centered roughly in the middle of this long hall that leads up to uh the pulpit you know, raised dais the priest is there. His eyes are bleeding, staring out into nothing. Carlos is also there. He's right by the organ, ready to play. The congregation is looking up at seemingly nothing. They don't make a sound. But there's something there just above them. It's almost imperceptible. As soon as you cross in through the doors, you hear the sound of the organ play. Dun, 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 like very grave melancholy song play and this thing as it plays as it continues to play the little thing that is moving and fluctuating above the congregation starts to get bigger and bigger and bigger it twitches and it, the aperture opens up larger and larger and what you see when you look into it you glimpse stars, this vast expanse that stretches out to who knows how far out. And you know, just by looking at it, that what you're peering into is the originator of this dream. Beyond this aperture lies the thing that is dreaming all of this. You, your friends, your family, your entire lives all connected into this eldritch dream that is being dreamt up by this being that you've never known and yet has always known you and sitting nearby on the opposite side of that congregation is the man in white he's just sucking down eggs oh hi sees you walking in through the door he waves at you and beckons you to come closer as the child continues to play the dirge 
as you both come into the church, it, your immediate reaction may be to perform violence against one another, given what happened back there at the library. But as soon as the thought enters your mind, it quickly leaves your mind and your hand begins to tingle when it does. Because you see, the mark of the bloody tongue means you can't hurt another person with the mark of the bloody tongue. You are thus protected from yourselves and from each other. The man in white beckons as he watches what may seemingly be the end of the world. In the background, there is a, a, another figure that just sort of appears. And it just happens to do so in little flashes. It's a weakened version of John Cross himself watching everything go down around you. Oh, this God. is where it happens. You remember, you start remembering the future. This is where it occurs. This is where the end of the world takes place, or at least the beginning of it. If the child is allowed to play the full extent of dirge. When you look at, when you look, when you approach closer to the man in white to Alziz, you look, you happen to glance over at the, uh, the congregation. All of their eyes are missing as well, blood running down their face. And they're just staring em emptily with, with empty eyes into this aperture as it gets bigger and bigger. The blinking uh, brainless beacon that is coming from this light inside of this aperture. You know that if you stare long enough, the same will happen to you. What do you do? I uh, avert my eyes and I don't know if it'll do anything, but I put my hands in a symbol of prayer, oh. touching the symbols together, oh. see if they'll actually do anything. <laughs> okay. And I start walking towards the organ if I can. That's a brilliant idea. And yes, um, what is also going to happen, however, is you're also going to help. What, how, how, what is your power score currently? It's currently nine. Lose two more permanently. As when you put your hands together, you feel that symbol sort of burning away. And you're like, it's, it's agonizing when you do it. You're just like, ugh. Yeah, it's almost like you're cutting off your own hand by doing this. Agent Jeff, and you're approaching, are, are you approaching the child or are you approaching the man in white? I am walking up towards the organ. Mm. Not necessarily okay. towards the child, but. Okay. Excellent. You go up there, Agent Jeff, same question. What do you do? He will be approaching Stephen. And asking, so hey, what's, buddy. what's the game plan here? What's next? This is what's next, he says, and he just sort of gestures around him. I'm just enjoying myself. I, well, what's that next? kid right there is going to bring the end of the world, so I guess if you want to do something about it, you should probably do something about it now. What's, I'll wait, he says. He just kind of like you, continues. Steven? <laughs> he just laughs and looks at you. like, <laughs> And he just continues to eat these eggs like they were made out of popcorn, you know? I just grab like his thing of eggs and just throw it somewhere. What? Oh, next he for you. Down, grabs another crate. <laughs> he puts it on his lap. <laughs> Is there an encore? Oh, I always. There's, of course there is. It has to go on, doesn't it? That's not what John Cross said. Meh, 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 meh. He says like that. And he's like, John Cross is special plan. Well, he's he unfortunately can't be here to see it through, can he now? Somebody he's right his ass up. He's right over there. Oh, he's very weak right now. He'll be back. We have, he checks his watch. We have a full 24 hours or so. Well, about 20, 22 hours. 
before he uh, graces us with his presence again. And time is ticking, Agent Jeff. I'm going to sit down. <laughs> oh, content to watch the end of the world early. Okay. He just keeps his like, hands over an egg. He cracks one, hands one over. Thank you. Sits, sits, <laughs> sits back another one. He's just enjoying the show. Agent Wild. You approach the boy playing the, the organ. He can sense you coming. And kind of looks over his shoulder as he's playing, and then he leaves. He takes his hands off of the, off of the organ, and the keys just continue to play. What are you doing? Uh, how are you doing that, Carlos? I'm not. Who is? He looks up to where the crucifix used to stand before the priest took it down and broke it. He looks to the aperture. Oh. Okay. Do you want to be doing this? He thinks about that for a second. It sounds like you're the only adult who's asking him a legitimate question. I don't want this world anymore, he says. When he says that, you can sense the melancholy like emanating off of him. You know John Cross chose vulnerable children very specifically. And he very specifically targeted them with his truths to try to like bring him to their uh, bring them to his side of thinking. I don't, I don't think that that's what you really think. I think that's what John Cross told you. And Was he you wrong? Into. Yes and no. No, because this world's kind of shit sometimes. Yes, because I can think of a number of not necessarily good, but weird and interesting people who want to keep it safe for the people who are actually good. You think what I'm doing, what we're doing here today is wrong? You want me to tell you the truth? He looks at you and like an acknowledgement. He looks into your eyes when you say that. Yes. Yeah, it's wrong. You're making a choice for other people without giving them a say. For a moment, you hear him speak, but at the same time, you can also hear John Cross's voice, almost like enhancing it, like, or in a way like, like you've heard him say this before. This world, he says, and everything in it is a mistake. You can tell your mom she's a mistake. He looks someone's down. dog, someone's cat, someone's sister. It's all a dream. His dream he points to the aperture. None of this is real. It's just pain. Is it? I mean, like, really think back before he came along. Is it? And you see, like, he's processing everything that you're throwing his way, and uh, you can tell, like, he starts remembering other things 
parts of his life and he starts getting like emotional about it meanwhile the 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 organ continues to play and the aperture gets continuously larger remember what he said is that uh he's just a part of the puzzle the organ is the other problem he started the uh, the dirge that will end the world he can't necessarily stop it what do you do I don't have time for you to think about all those things, but I'd like you to. I'm sorry, kid. And Daniel's going to climb up on the organ and start trying to tear down the stacks. Oh. Or rip up good. the keys, very even. Good. Very good. Yes. So, you get up there and you're like, I'm sorry. You push him aside and you start like, banging the stuff down and start smashing stuff as best as you can and that's when the congregation starts to move and boy do they move <laughs> uh you see all these like elbows agent jeff it's like oh this is this is a good part right here you see a like a, over a dozen people start rushing forward like mindless zombies and they try to like literally tear you to pieces to oh. prevent you from keeping this from happening well gotta put a stop to that <laughs> the mo but as you as you start doing that however and it starts making this cacophony the organ still play and you, still, you hear this like ominous music fill in the hall of the of the, uh, the church um carlo stands and sees what you're doing and has to like have a serious thought uh process go through his head he looks at the congregation and he looks around and he uh, he sees like the the big pulpit, big uh, uh, pulpit that the priest typically reads out of. The priest, by the way, just turns and like glares at you with no eyes. And he goes up. Carlos like pushes the priest out of the way, goes to the pulpit, and ah, like pushes it and like manages to like push it onto a group of the the congregation that's clambering up the uh, up to the, the the top to get you and flattens like three or four of them straight away just and the thing just collapses and breaks on them and he just like falls to the ground crying hysterically they don't bother with him they just swarm over him and carlos disappears as and they just like climb mindlessly over him and just like leave him behind uh agent jeff you have an action if you want to perform one may i have a free action to ask steven one question before i do it sure shoot I've only heard an echo of this so far, haven't I? This is the source of the song I've been hearing all this time. Isn't this it? is, in fact, the music that you've been hearing this whole time. Except now, it's an organ format. And there's Church something else format. to it, right? Of course okay. there is. I'm going to walk over towards the organ, but while they are in a swarm, just start shooting into the pile of the congregation shoot shoot it to the pile it is roll uh roll your firearm so the interesting thing about this organ is that it is a massive machine okay this thing was literally built into the back of this church so the pipes aren't just like right there where you can see them those are the immediate ones but they actually go further back and are actually like inside the lining of the walls and they have like little crawl spaces that you have to get into to basically go in and, and essentially to perform maintenance on it. It's a very expensive thing to have. So if you wanted to fully destroy this thing, yeah, you start at the keys and stuff like that, but you also have to make your way into the back and do like a, you know, uh, Ellen Ripley and like crawl <laughs> elbows and knees in through like these little uh, close confines and actually sabotage the, the machinery from the inside. Meanwhile, Agent Jeff opened fire, opens fire on the congregation. What did you roll damage-wise? Uh, oh, I rolled just to hit, and I succeeded on that. Oh, okay. For your damage. Damage is 10. 10 damage. Okay. Splendid. Uh, okay. So that is... So there's effectively like five people like dead or unconscious on the floor right now because you're just like bah, 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 
And as soon as they, as soon as some of them are realize that they're being sh fired upon, half of them go one way towards you, and the other half go the other way towards Agent Wild. Uh, Wild, you're gonna have to do some uh, some hot footwork here uh, to get ahead of this mob. Uh, roll athletics, please. And they roll a 96, so that's good for them. <laughs> They're not going anywhere. Let's we'll see how fun. this goes. I've got an athletics yeah. of 30. Just don't roll a 97. Don't jinx me! <laughs> <laughs> roll the 10. You roll the 10? 10. Straight up. All right, yeah, so... You see a bunch of these people are like literally climbing over everything in their path to get to you. Like ravenously trying to just claw at you and pull you down and then just rip you to pieces. And you manage to like, oh shit, you, you see what's happening and you see like there's a little opening off to the side. You run over there, you grab uh, a, a handhold and you swing over and like it's literally uh, like, a, like a, two, uh, a two foot wide expanse. And it's like, you know, eight feet in length. Uh, uh, vertically and you have to kind of like just squeeze your way through to get in before they do you manage to get in but they start clamoring in behind you they're having a really hard time keeping up with you but given enough time they will get you uh, you're back there behind the first layer and you see the pipes as they come up uh, they're sort of structured in, a, in sort of like an array and it, like they rise up and then they fall back down as they're moving uh, and like you see little pieces of motes of dust falling off of them as they're being used for the first time and so probably since this thing has been installed um how are you sabotaging the uh the um mechanics um so doing anything i can to alter the sound of the pipe which could mm. possibly be caused with a sufficient enough dent um Causing change to the airflow. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah, you see, so, like, take a sock, stuff it down the one pipe, or bend <laughs> the other one, <laughs> try to do it. Yeah, together, like, any, anything at all. Like, uh, if I can kick it or whack it with a metal something mm -hmm. or shoot them, because I do have a firearm. Yeah. I don't know if that'll be firearm. bad. <laughs> <laughs> it's up to you what you want to do with it. I mean, you'll definitely get tinnitus that way. <laughs> I mean, IRL, I already have it, so. <laughs> oh, <no. laughs> um, yeah, ev every every little thing, d d remove shoes, stuff them down in there, socks, stuff them <laughs> down in there. Makes it uh, more agile. Yeah, you're able to uh, run better on your on your bare feet. Uh, give me another athletics check as you're doing that, because they're starting to crawl through now. 37 and my athletics are 30. Excellent. Oh, wait, so you made it or you? I, I did I not. You did not. Do you have a reroll? Uh, it has a bonus from a number of people in our viewership right now. <laughs> you may want to go ahead and reroll that. <laughs> yeah. Otherwise, you're about to take damage. Oof, 46. Not better. Oh, fuck. All right. Uh, roll 3d3 and take that much damage, please. 3d3? Yeah. D oh, weird. D3? <laughs> what? 3d3? Do you not own a d3? It <laughs> you could roll it in natural if, if it's easier to think of it that way. You could just roll a d6 and, you know, the first couple of numbers is one, second set of numbers is two, last set of numbers is three. Um, Agent Jeff. Uh, I also need you to roll athletics because you're being chased by a mob. I thought you said there were three of them. Oh, I rolled a three. No. Okay. There's like 17 of them, five of which are now dead or unconscious, and they okay. split off six and six. <laughs> <laughs> you got three damage uh, to your hit points. Yeah. Can't As they're like reaching else. through, like they're not quite getting in, but one of them like her hand like reaches up and just scratches you across the face. The other one like comes down with like a what seems to be like a bat or something, just clobbers you across the face, and you're like, oh fuck, oh god, oh god, and they're just like like climbing over each other to get inside. Um, give me another athletics check. Uh, what'd you get, uh, Agent Jeff? Fifty out of thirty, so I failed. You want to reroll? I don't think I have any more. 
Okay. Uh, also roll 3d3 <laughs> as you're about to take some damage. Rolled 12 this time. I've passed. Nice. I rolled four damage and I have a vest on, so I think Ooh. I just take two or three. Take two damage. Yeah, as they're basically like grabbing, clawing, and tearing at you, like they grab your jacket and they're like, oh shit. Agent Wild, as you're like getting out of there, one of them gets loose, runs at you, and you get through the other end of that little crawl space, that two foot crawl space, and you get through, and one of them reaches out, grabs your shirt, and pulls it right off your back. And you're just like, oh! <laughs> Daniel Jackson running around half naked with no shoes on. Uh, <laughs> there's one last layer of these pipes, and you could hear the, the density of the sound like dampen considerably after the damage you've caused, but it's still playing. We've got one last rung in the back. Uh, the most sensitive parts of the, the array are back there. Um, go ahead and you call back through as they're, as they're like slowly but surely catching up with you. And now they finally managed to hurdle their way through. So now they are actually following you back out. Oh. Um, yeah. Um, now they're going to attack you, Agent Jeff. Uh, I thought they just they attacked fail. me. <laughs> yeah, no, this is basically just a group of people like ramp, okay. like just running over you and trying to knock That's you over. Fair. Their actual skill to attack is not great. <laughs> so don't worry about it. But as a group, they try, they're like tearing and scratching at you and okay. shit. And you're just like, oh, fuck, fuck, fuck. Uh, what do you do? It's your turn. So he believes in the power of music, right? Of course. And he's heard this song for, I don't know how long at this point. <laughs> he's had time to come up with a song related to it, I feel like. Something like the opposite. Mm. Something different. Okay. And he wants to try to play it on the organ. <laughs> uh, I don't think the congregation would be okay with that. Uh, how do no. you uh, square that with them exactly? Oh, I was hoping that if I got to the organ and started playing, they wouldn't do anything. So I'm just going to start shooting them. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, you just try to fire uh, at some of the other ones and try to get around to, to the uh, to the organ. Mm -hmm. uh, Maybe like me. Well, unless, couple, well, I'll, I'll give you this. Give me an athletics check. If you can beat their athletics check, you make it to the organ before they do and you may have a chance. All right. Fuck. Fail their athletics check. That's a 24 a out of 30. Oh shit. I put, oh shit. No, I, I put no points into athletics on this guy. So you make it to the organ, you're like, <sighs> and you see all Z, like, you look behind you as they're like clamoring over the, the pews and knocking shit aside. And all these is like, ooh, ooh, and he points to his watch. And you're just like, fuck, fuck, fuck. You're trying to like clear your head and like concentrate on playing the song. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't, do you have music? <laughs> I do indeed have right. points in music. Fucking use that shit, man. Roll I that did it skill. to increase my starting corruption. <laughs> <laughs> Excellent. Oh, I don't have any more rerolls, and that's a failure. Oh fuck! You hit a couple wrong keys, and it's like now the aperture's still opening, and you're like, "Fuck, fuck! I need to find the right combination." God damn it! Uh, they've got about another round to get to you before they tear you to pieces. Agent Wild, you make it into the back crawl space. Give me uh, another athletics check, please, and then give me an unarmed. as now they're coming in from both angles and trapping you inside. Okay, so that was a 26 out of 30 for wow. athletics. And what was the other roll? The other roll is unarmed. Because you successfully sabotaged that last row, like you're just furiously working on destroying and uh, dampening the sound. Meanwhile, these guys are coming at you from two different angles and they're trapping you inside. So you need to roll unarmed to be able to get kept from being pinned to the ground and torn torn asunder. I'm gonna need to re-roll that. <laughs> okay. Like 48 yeah, out of 40. <laughs> oh, go ahead and roll. Yeah, re-roll that. Godspeed. Twelve. Twelve? Yeah, 12 oh, shit. So two of them managed to grab you and they're like 
yanking you back and forth and like knocking you into the into the walls and stuff like that they're basically trying to like impale you on the low-lying uh pipes that are sticking out of the ground like to have your blood like you know <laughs> go down the pipes and they almost managed to do so but you managed to like push one of them into it and instead they fall and it's just a waterfall of blood just psh, as they just sink into the uh into the pipes and the sour note comes out as Agent Jeff is furiously trying to play the right uh, tune. Uh, you push past the last one and go out the crawl space off to the side and try to get away as fast as you can. Agent Jeff, you have, sorry, go ahead. I'm picturing a gargling pipe. <laughs> yeah, it's like little, like little oh. bubbles of blood. <laughs> it's like a, rip, like a gutter. Yeah. <laughs> Agent Jeff, you have one last chance before they are upon you. Roll your music. I rolled a 22 out of 20. I'm so mad. That's a matched failure. Do you have a reroll? Can I give him my last reroll that I have? <laughs> I will allow it. <laughs> it's the end of the world after all. It's <laughs> the end of the world. A 14. Why not? Out of 20. You got a 14? Son of a bitch. Okay, so you you start, you've had time to think about how this is a discordant uh, song and you start trying to think of it in ways that you can counter that so you instead of like uh, I don't know like a B flat you hit this note instead and you just you try to play it as to the best of your ability and it almost starts coming out like like a melody from like a John Lennon song like uh, uh, Imagine or something like that you know and it, it sounds weird on a church organ, but somehow you see all of a sudden the the aperture starts to shut closed. And you see, you hear a lone person clapping in the background. The man in white applauds. <laughs> oh, green women! <laughs> you see uh, the congregation uh, is just completely mad, like just falls to the ground. They all scream in unison. <laughs> And they start like yelling random weird shit. Ah, they start yelling and uh, they're bleeding out of their orifices even more so now. Um, you start feeling a tugging uh, motion around you, uh, like from the walls and ceiling. Like you see, like as the aperture is closing, you feel that with every twitch and as it gets smaller and smaller, and the room and everything around you starts to get pulled into it slowly but surely. You have moments to get out of this church before you are sucked into t into space. I keep playing. Roll athletics. I keep playing. <laughs> you keep playing. Oh shit! Jeff is gonna play us out. All right. Wow. Excellent. Uh, Agent Daniel. Uh, sorry, Agent Daniel. Uh, Agent uh, Wild, what do you got? What do, what do I got? For athletics? Yeah. Oh, okay. Uh, let me roll. Let me find out. <laughs> roll a 71 out of 30. Oh, would you like to re-roll? <laughs> So like I don't have any. Your re -rolls? <laughs> you don't have any re-rolls. Oh no. Does out. anybody have any re-rolls? <laughs> Does oh, the chat, in the chat have... just oh, boosted oh, Amber? Oh, oh. Somebody. Nice. There we go. Give it another go. <laughs> you see, as That's you're like stumbling somebody. your way out of there, some of the congregation are like grabbing you and pulling you back in. And Alziz just kind of walks over and drops an egg onto their face. Like, get up, move. <laughs> What the heck? He just looks at you, he's like, ah, I, I rolled everything for you people. My God. I don't know if this means that it is a fail or a good. I rolled exactly 30. That is success. Okay. Yeah, you, hey, that's it. Fucking A. You get up, you see this happen, and you're just like, you get up and you bolt out of there. Um, as you burst open the doors of the church you stand back you know it's like late really late at night uh and you see the the last sounds of the organ die out as all sound as all time ceases inside of this church for just a moment and the interior just gets sucked in completely into this aperture you see the rest of the church and stuff like start to fall apart around you 
and thus the end of the world, the end of all things, was averted. Since only one of you survived the ordeal, how, what is, how do we see Agent Wild in their own personal epilogue? Wild is living in a very impoverished apartment with uh, just ramen all in the cabinets. It's, it's literally just ramen. Mm. And he's got drawings everywhere of music, sheets of music, uh, both the music that he heard that was the discordant music to summon the end of the world and the song that uh, Agent Jeff was playing. And he's, it's kind of like that one gif with the guy in front of the boards and he's like got the red string everywhere and the black string and he's just yes. trying to figure out how to avert it because it will happen again. It will happen again, you're right. You, um, You've tried to move on from that day that you lost literally everyone. And uh, you get something in the mail. Specifically, two pieces of mail. One is not addressed by, from anybody, but it is it is addressed to you, but there's no return label or anything like that. And you're like, oh shit, I hope this isn't some weird shit from me from the future or something like that. You open it up. It's a very clean letterhead and everything, and it's written very immaculate uh, script. And it says, thank you for all the new shiny toys and for helping to put them away for me. Here is a reward I typically give to all my employees after a job well done. Be seeing you, A. All white letterhead black lettering it beneath that there's a little address it says 128 east 98th street and lexington avenue i know where that is <laughs> yes you do look below the rubble for your reward it says the other piece of mail is returnable to barnabas or in this case using his real name, Gary Sanderson. And you're like, I need to read this letter. It's the last letter he wrote to you and the rest of your cellmates. Do you go to 128 East 98th Street and Lexington Avenue to retrieve your reward from Mr. A? He does not. He does not. What a shame. He would have given you a nice shiny little Rolex. A Rolex? What he does for all of his employees for oh, helping God. to put away his toys. His way of thanking you. The other letter, however. It starts, I guess this is it. This is where my fight ends. You know, before he went over to the program, a guy I knew said that our mission wasn't over until the world ends. And while you may think that's not what happened, I can tell you right now that this is exactly what occurred. The world as we knew it is gone. There's no going back after what we've been through. I hope that as you read this, you'll understand that what we sacrificed was worth it. Sure, it's not going to be the same. Nothing ever will be. But we're still here, aren't we? John Doe talked about greater truths, said that everything that we know, the universe, space and time, is just a dream, a projection that belongs to some massive, unknowable sleeping behemoth. He said that everything that we have ever done and everything that we will ever do is pointless, and we will be gone forever the moment this thing awakens from its dream. This is his grim truth. 
I won't lie to you and say that this isn't also going to happen. The world is ending, will end, has ended. And there's nothing anyone can do about that. There is no stopping it. It simply is. It is beyond all of us, life, death, and time itself. But we're still here. So use your time. Tell them you love them, hold them close to you, and watch them grow up. Don't let anyone tell you that you don't belong just because you're different. You belong here. Forget about the mysteries of the universe and focus instead on the people who care about you, your new family. Stop obsessing about the past and the future. Live in the now before it leaves you behind. Get out of your own head and let yourself be vulnerable. Forgive yourself. And you realize that as you read those portions, he's not specifically citing you with this. This is a carbon copy mail that he sent to every single one of the people inside of the cell. So in it, he's addressing every single person like, hey, get out of your own head. Agent white lady, forgive yourself for what happened. You know, he's trying to like give you one last goodbye. He's like, do whatever you have to do to just keep going. Together, we will soldier on. He's like, whatever promise of a threat, whichever terrible mystery or sleeping monstrosity lies lurking in the shadow, ready to unleash untold horrors upon the world, we will be ready. Standing guard, holding a loft torch, waiting to once again breach that mortal threshold, if it means pushing back that darkness for one more day. The world as we knew it may have ended, but we're still here, all of us, moving onwards with the march of time, pulling the world back from the brink tomorrow and the day after and the day after that. The last thing he writes is, that guy I knew was wrong. The mission never ends. Ever vigilant, Greg. And that is the end, as they say. Well then, as this marks the end of our terrifying tale, that's all the time that we have for this session. I hope everyone here and those watching enjoyed the show. Uh, next week, we will continue the saga of Dune with season two, with many of the people present uh, today. Uh, if you enjoyed tonight's program, feel free to check out other awesome adventures and terrifying tales. In the way of awesome adventures, Tuesdays, uh, we continue a Black Bo uh, Dwayne's Black Void story on their nebulous skies. Wednesday, we continue the One Ring, Four Swords of the North. Thursdays, we have Changeling, The Lost, a, harrowed, a tale of harrowed bone and Pathfinder Undying. Uh, Fridays brings us a Call of Cthulhu campaign, Mass of Nyarlathotep, and, which follows uh, Patty's Scarlands Dracogenesis Season 2. On Saturdays, it's the 5e game, Usurpers of Ruination. Sundays, uh, we also have the D&D 5e campaign, Plangia, followed by Cult, Divinity Lost, and Chasmagoria. And in the After Dark category, we have Mythos World, a Blackout, later this evening, and SCP RPG, Mimetic Hazard, on Saturdays, both beginning around 11.55 Eastern Standard Time. Uh, instead of votes, I wanted to go around and just ask uh, everyone about their highlights, any favorite moments from the campaign, uh, exceptional, exceptionally good role playing. You want to point out uh, now would be the time to do so. Weber, just in <laughs> general, one hundred percent. Yeah, uh, the speech wild, the speeches wild gave mm. today really mm. struck a chord with me, so that was lovely. But yeah, Weber throughout the whole game, just amazing. <laughs> Agreed. All right. I was legitimately upset when Weber died. I I can imagine. Right? I wasn't expecting that to happen. I, but not just just there. I was ex Jeff wanted to promise crazy a baby. I was <laughs> expecting it to be you that killed her. I oh twist. 
Let's I thought see. that I was going to die first, to be honest with you. I knew my character was going to die as soon as she agreed to go back on the mission after she had a chance to walk away, and she didn't. Mm. And she decided to do it. Like, she knew in her head she was going to die because she knew I have achieved what I wanted to do. I've gotten my job at Starbucks, and I'm working on the next stage of my mm -hmm. life. Or I can go do this dangerous thing that no one's making me do anymore. But she did it because she knew it was the genuine end of the world, and that didn't just mean for the humans, it meant for the rest of her species. A real hero, yep. And knowing exactly. that they were still okay and out there in the Pacific kind of clinched it for her that she had to finish this mm. because it was important. And also, yeah. when I had that moment, I knew I could run and my character would survive, but then mm. I saw that Wild had gone for the face banishing, and I was like, nope! Gotta stick behind. Well, mm. I knew I was wow. gonna die when I made the character. Yep. <laughs> if I had a hat, I would take it off and hold it to my heart for Walter. Mm. Went out in a blaze oh. of glory. Walter had a Dude, good. What about ending. Jeff though? Jeff, what about Jeff's ending? Like that was some. Well, that was we all know that Jeff is gone forever. But I... see, the reason why I like Walter's death is because technically White Lady killed him. <laughs> How dare! Hey, it was my explosives. <laughs> but he made the I'm the choice. one who set. A, I'm the one who set a five minute timer for two minutes. He made the choice. Yeah, though. basically has big main character energy. Mm. <laughs> He's the one who's vaguely rational compared with everyone else, so he explains to the audience what's going on, whereas everyone else is generally reacting like this is perfectly normal, and we have ethical conversations about the merits of removing things that might end the world even if they're children or we ask sensible questions like why aren't we killing the political candidate anyway <laughs> um honestly i would give credit for the storyteller including the complicated moment when cross was insisting you have to learn to um be ready to kill and i was like mm. my character's been ready to kill all along She's got mm -hmm. skewed morality, and as if Dr. Pendergast was checking, do you feel an unusual craving for flesh? <laughs> no, I no, just brains. The fact that she's not really perfectly human in her aesthetics, even mm. if she is a little bit like, I just want people to love me. Mm -hmm. uh, and is adorable. Then you ran she's back the into the room. Rest in power, and Emily. Yes, uh, well, I think I got a pretty badass death, given that I got to let fly on the Mego with my final death activity. Yes! I don't know yes, how much I helped, other than allowing other people to run away. Well, if I'll tell you this. If you hadn't done that, there's no telling what kind of destruction it could have caused the rest of you, because it essentially has the same sort of stats as a Shagoth when it's out of its... Uh, human form so yeah <laughs> that's why i was focusing on the shop back i felt that barnabas himself was a red herring his vessel is very mm. fragile and fungible um you gotta think about the slime and it's also why i went after the slime patch that had previously spat because i knew if someone didn't get that it was going to show up later yeah hats off to all of you you all did a fantastic job thank you for uh, soldiering through all of that <laughs> i know it was a lot yeah. um all right, for you those of you at home. mention to White oh. Lady's grip, though. Like, just the yes. endless line and self-destructiveness. <laughs> it was epic from start to finish. I honestly Thank thought you. White Lady was going to buy it back in, like, third-party Canada, and she just kept, like, churning along, just stacking up bodies left and right, like, holy shit. I, <laughs> I honestly don't know how I lived it long. I thought you were going to get killed by the Terminator at the end of the first episode. <laughs> yeah! Mm. I thought I was going to get killed by that one first. No, I am honestly, and I would not have died by your hand had you not critted. So it's your reroll was story, all the worth yeah. it. Some people have the confidence to pull things off. I was like, here's the best part. I only put 40, I only had a 40 in firearms. I just decided to just take the biggest gun and deal with that. Boom, hand cannons. Yeah, for real. Excellent. Well, all of you did excellent as always. Uh, thank you to our fans as always uh, for tuning in. I've been uh, Eric at Modern Recluse on Twitter. You can find me back here uh, later tonight for Mythos World and again Tuesday for Black Void. Everybody, uh, go ahead and tell the good people at home who you are, where they can find you, and uh, 
and who you play this evening, beginning with um, uh, Ben. Hey, Ben, Big Dad, Walker, Dark Visions for Cowards. Um, <laughs> I was Agent Walter, Agent Jeff, uh, who was kind of just anti-Walter um, in every <laughs> possible way. Um, <laughs> yeah, you can find me over at Big Dad Industries. I'll be running some stuff on Gehenna Gaming uh, because the founder, Ian, recently had a child. And so they, they're going to fill the slots. So uh, do that. Also, the application is still open for my all sedite game. I don't know. That I actually keep... sounds super cool. But is it running? What? I don't know yet. Because I have a Viper concept that's been dying to be played. Listen, just apply. <laughs> when do I apply? What time slot is it? I'll, do, I'll, I'll send you the information. Okay, send me the information because I have a hyper concept that is all punching and I agree. All right. Mm -hmm. That's me. Nice. And I had a great time. Every session. Awesome. Thanks. Thank you. Uh, Key, tell the good people who you are and uh, who you play this evening. Where they can find you. Yes, I am Kisama. You can find me on Twitter at TrueKisama. You can also find me on Sunday running the Plain Gia game. Very big, a lot of dinosaurs. Much wow. No words, no <laughs> numbers. Much wow. Uh, yeah, and you can find me throughout the whole rest of the week uh, in various games here on Vorpal Tales. Excellent. Devin. Hello, all. I have been White Lady up until I got a giant hole in my skull, and it was <laughs> glorious. And you can find me online at Sword of Solid. And next time you'll see me is Friday for Rachel's Masks of Nyarlathotep game. Awesome. Ambrose. Hey, everybody. I've enjoyed playing Agent Wild, a.k.a. Daniel, for you. Uh, the boy who lived. Um, <laughs> uh, I just threw myself off. Sorry. You can find me playing next in Mythos World in uh, about an hour ish, a little less than that. And I have a void, and the void is my cue to be done. <laughs> Kitty. Uh, and last but certainly not least, uh, Panda. Hey, I'm Panda. You can find me in various places as at Veckled and tune in the same time slot to see me make my level best to play a Benny Gesserit nanny. I played a nemony. I had a good run and realized pretty much everything for this concept other than horrifying pregnancy arc. But uh, that's great. There wouldn't have been nine months for it. And <laughs> I'm looking forward to checking out maybe if I can get that time slot for um, set eye funsies. I want to see that concept work. And also a big thank you to the audience for sticking with me and everyone else. Excellent. Well said. All right. Big thanks as, as always to our patrons for supporting what we do. If you want to be awesome and do the same, check out our Patreon page at patreon.com slash Warple Tales and keep up the date with what we do uh, by checking the calendar on WarpleTales.com. And thanks to you, all of our viewers and fans, for tuning in. As usual, maintain situational awareness, keep your intel compartmentalized, and always watch your backs. Good night, everyone. That's me. All right.